Oh, I just much and she. It's time for oh, a new little mini game event. Also, other things. Mostly, a couple of local legends I could try fighting real quick. That's the idea. <clears throat> I honestly think I will go over to fight Kosiho first. Do you have? <clears throat> I'm not sure. Let me see. Hmm. Could condense some resin and get a few more talent books for Milani is the thing. That would be good. The way I want to beat the turtle is by just using Milani's vaporize properties. The best way to do that would of course be booster talent levels as high as possible first. I think we can manage that. Just need to make sure we use the right one. Okay. Should be good. Actually, got Perma Pyro on them, so may as well do it like this. Get this team in. Wait, this is wrong. This is very wrong. <laughs> Never mind. Why did I even use that team against? I don't know. Right, right, we don't need Dia in here if they've got Prima Pyro on them. Be careful. Okay. And let's put in Kachina there instead. Yeah, yeah, and just for friendship. Won't be doing all that much there. Okay. <clears throat> right. Let us. Make this happen. Thank you. Put this down and one, two, three. Right. One, two, three. Right. One, two. Oh my lord! I don't know what's up. There's something wrong with power in here. I think it's the flickering light bulb. Other thing is that she's taken damage out of the wazoo. Hmm. Feed you tofu. Ah. But they're also the Fatui local legends. The way I'd like to deal with them would have to be... The new Viet team gotten a bit better at making that work. Okay. Come on, come on, one, three, right, one, two, three, right, one, two, three, right, and that's, yeah, we're good to go there. Okay. Decent damage from that burst. This is an okay enough team to take down these dudes. Mm hmm. But of course, it's three or so, four, and I need 18 in total to get her to 888, given that I'm anal retentive out of about leveling every single part up. So, the difference it makes is marginal at best. Okay, two, three, right, one, two, three, right, and... Okay, so we definitely got Bucky with with its buff that time. Okay. Mm -hmm -hmm. But it is very, very nice to have a strong Milani. <clears throat> very, very good at what she does. Okay. One, two, three, and oh my goodness. This is Less than ideal. Come on. And so again, we got lucky with some crits. Okay. 
going to keep on going through. One more run, and then we can... Actually, yeah, one more run, and then we can heal up the statue anyway, because we'd have to leave to condense a bit more resin to begin with. Okay. Thank you. And, oh goodness. Bad news. Two, three, right. One, two, three, right. One, two, three, right. Yeah, I... It's gotta be just a difference between whether I get a useless or useful Witsith buff. It's the fact that the attack buff does literally nothing to her, for her, does not help things. Literally. Hmm. Two more should definitely do it. Hmm. Go and heal real quick. Of course we got this here too. Hmm. Go in. Boost myself up. Okay. See how many contention books we can get out of this. And oh, lucky us! That was basically perfect. Hmm. Guess we could get stuff for Keenich, maybe. Though it will be some ways off when I pick him up. We'll see what happens. But hmm. Do I have enough whistles? I need a few more gold whistles. Okay. Should be fine. Just a few more of these, and then we can send her to war. Alright. Got a good amount of things, but I should probably kill Safo a few more times. Not kill, but fight. Again, it is nice that she uses whale mats. Hmm. If I had really wanted to, I could have leveled up. Leveled up the E skill two times instead of leveling the normal and the burst. The burst is still good. That's a little under 100. Taking 9 as the functional maximum, which is a decently accurate way of seeing things. But I'll be using her in the party for the rest of the patch, presumably, so. Let's see how this all goes. Pregnable defense. Hmm. So we- oh, well, it's Dia we want on that team. Okay. How far away do we have to get? Right. Just back to the actual team I usually use when burning is needed to apply aura. Thank you, thank you. And just go back and try that again. Really, really, really. Hmm. Decent position. That should be good enough to take down Casio semi reliably, depending on Witsith buffs. It's hard to see and say. I feel like the way I've got to do it, maybe, is just seeing what Witsith buff I get before. Because it's not that long to switch in Dia and then put Milani back on. That would allow me to make sure I've got the right buffs. I don't know. I really don't know. Okay. Oh, well, alright. Get over here. Shogane. And... Get this started. Thank you. And... Oh, uh, not if I get stuck. Come on. And just a few more of you guys over here. Come on. Over, bite, and... Range on that is pretty much infinite, which is nice. Come on, come on. It's kind of funny how much trouble I had with this one trying to use the new characters who weren't leveled yet. 
No, it's just simple. Child's play. Just because Milani's damage is so dependent on level. Since it's all HP scaling. Okay. Internal combustion charge. Power particles at the time limit. It's just right there. Okay. Allow me to... Pass that Unkosaurus Warrior. Back to spinning mode. Okay. Started. And it's honestly interesting how little this has to do with any kind of story and ability. Though so presumably, I guess once we get Chaska and therefore Flight, it'd be a bit different. Okay. Should probably go and collect a bunch of succulent and succulent seeds for the sake of Kinich. Okay. Come on. Back over this way. Just collect the final few particles and we'll be good. Thank you, thank you. And that's the end of that. They just got to seven. Okay. The only things left would be that music making quest and another time trial against tribal warriors. Okay. Thank you, thank you. And let's put this down. So, one, two, three, right. Uh, okay. And I should hit the big guy. Oh well. Two, three, right. One, two. Oh well. Presumably a crit missile. Last one is going to be this quest over here by the musician. So we've done part of that already. I think I messed it up because on my own time I got that the fall up calm one day and it was basically protect the record and I did not manage to protect the record. Okay. Thank you. You're over there. Hello? Up here, okay. Hello, you <clears throat> Okay, what is pop anyway? Musical ideals, push your seal. Okay, appreciates music. Gathering sound samples. Okay, that's the last thing we did. That's basically gonna allow me to restart this. Line and presumably save his stuff next time instead of messing stuff up, hopefully. The issue was just it was all too easy to break his stuff with the setup I have. Milani hits things pretty indiscriminately. Very least covers a lot of area during her charge. Look at the bird. Look at those birds. Listen to their cries. My my, those wouldn't make excellent material for my next work. Still, things get pretty one note if we only recorded a few of them. If we could find a whole flock and record the sound of their collective calls, hang up that scuff whole source just up ahead. Hear how it scratches the stone with its claws. Get whole source of the sensitive sort, so let's not get too close. We'll get some professionals from our tribe to gather what I need afterwards. If anyone can pull this off, it'd be them. Oh, ho, warriors test themselves against one another. Good, good. That sounds about all lovely we indeed. Oh, what are you skulking about for eager for a fight? We're just gathering materials. Gathering, I'll show you gathering. Help. Traveler, stop him. Okay. Guys, <clears throat> the angry drops to people to leave. Okay. And... Bye. Bye. And... There we are. Simple enough. Okay. You're quite the dab hand yourself, aren't you, Traveler? You seem good at persuading the more agitated types. I thought it went okay. Wasn't even my full power. That's very modest of you. Thank you in any case. Well, that was quite the adventure, but either way, I've sucked to plenty of sounds to sample. After just a bit of prep work, I'll be able to officially start recording the audio. Hmm, we should start with the sounds of battle. Wait, no, that's not a good place to begin. We should open with something more normal. Okay. So, collect those. Go fight Casillo with team I got going. Okay. Good stuff. <clears throat> right over here. Thank you. Okay. And we go kill a turtle. And then the skirmishers, I would say. Thank you. Thank you. The team I run for that is... 
should still have it in here. This one. If you're down here for healing. Just ideally we want to get the damage bonus. With Zith buff. Then we're basically chilling. Okay. It's down here. Don't need any external buffs. And oh, we got the right one, which means we go in with you. Two, three. Hello! I am fighting the turtle. How are you doing? Three and fight. And send this out. Okay. So we're doing rather well for ourselves. Make sure we get the right Milani buff. And oh, goodness. We should surf out of the way. Yeah, it. Oh, nice. What's your build like? I need to I need to get around to that game. Let's make sure we have the right buffs. Put this down and that is the right buff. Okay, nice. One, two, three, and oh, we did not get the fire on you. That's actually a deal breaker. Oh goodness. Well, we gotta try this again. Hmm, bad news. I used to play a lot of D&D 5e. And I always liked playing wizards. Either bladesingers or divination. Sometimes a cleric or a bard, but usually just wizards. But... <clears throat> it's been a while since I've been able to play. The last time I played it, I ran it. Frankly. I do oftentimes find myself in the position of forever DM, so to speak. That is... Oh! Oh, interesting. What mod was it? I didn't know it had a modding scene. That's cool, though. Let's see if EM actually works well for her or not. EM works well, too. Hmm. Okay. And, uh, oh my goodness. Oh, okay. Oh, come on. I thought the shield would do better. Whatever. So what does it change in terms of the hotbar? Okay, do you have... Tenacity... E-Skill... Honestly, I don't know whether... Shield Strength would be good. If we put that on Dia instead, since Zhongli's skill isn't going to be hitting, make sure that it actually procs the Shield Strength buff. To give Milani a bit more durability, I suppose. But of course, it's not as if Petra was doing anything for her anyway. It's just basically a matter of passing around the tenacity set, since I leveled up for Dia. And basically give it to Zhongli to make him a better shield bot. Better at win- Oh! Oh, that's not good. Yeah, it- Reactions are interesting. I'm not sure if you've ever played D&D proper. <clears throat> But the big one that always stood out to me and that people would talk about was Counterspell. Especially since... There, there were two guys... Jeremy... Clarkson, maybe? I think that was his name. Jeremy something or other. And then Mike, Mir Mike Murals. Who some years ago were two designers on D&D 5e, which is the D&D version that Baldur's Gate 3 is based on who would do various sorts of ad hoc rules adjudications on Twitter. I don't think they do that anymore, but they would oftentimes disagree. What is honor mode? That's something I don't know about. I know that there's a strategist difficulty that's supposed to be really balls to the wall, and I really want to try that one out if I play it, just to see how hard it is. Especially, you know, as someone who's gotten decent experience with D&D. But... It's interesting. Okay, decent up damage, but how oh, the wits of buff. And also just crit luck. Hmm. This guy is way too fast. Well, I... This is about good luck, and I probably need to be giving myself some more buffs to... Okay. Maybe... Some of the buff juices could help out. Every single time. 
We got a pyro app, we need to use it. But if I use some of that essential oil, I could boost my damage up unconditionally pretty high. Because even without buffs, I can do this, but it requires a bit of luck with Wits of Buffs and Crits. Oh! Oh, that's cool. Okay, legendary actions, as you may or may not know, are, ju are also just a thing in base 5e D&D for higher level bosses. But in particular, generally they were for bosses who are at a CR challenge level, essentially recommended party level, way above anything you can actually get in. If it's not too private, have you played a lot of 5e or... How much 5e have you played? Two, three... Okay, bite again. Get that full guessing up. We're, we're doing okay. I don't think I'll be able to actually secure the kill like this, though. Well, the challenge kill, which is supposed to be kill it without triggering the shield. But what party do you usually... I mean, what class is your main character? And what's your sort of general team strategy, would you say? Like I said, I am, or at least was, an inveterate wizard player. I... Oh, nice. That's exciting. So... We were so close to a victory. I need to go and craft some potions. Hi, Kozu! Oh, interesting. Champion or... Battlemaster? I've played fighters a few times. Okay, let me see... Should make a potion or two in this streaming essential oil. Hello. Oh, okay. What I would say is, is that Champion and from some of the supplementary material, Brute, are the two simplest fighter classes, subclasses, and therefore the two simplest ways to play the game, period. And that can be interesting. That can be fine if you're more interested in the roleplay or don't want to have to think too hard about combat. But it can get boring. Oh, interesting. That's cool. So you're going to try to kind of tank. That's a good idea. Hmm. I'm going to use food buffs for this turtle. I'm going to use food buffs for the turtle. That's fine. Well, a potion buff and then... One of the crit rate foods. Don't really need more crit damage, so we'll just eat one of... Duke steaks. Yeah! That said, if you really wanted to tank, it might be interesting to look into Paladin, maybe not for this campaign, but for later. Stinky Ferret. Interesting. Okay. Well, I... Well, that was messed up. I screwed that up. It is... Dia's AoE is deceptively smaller, it seems. It's not pleasant. Hmm. Well, let's try this again. Because we get good damage, but... It's basically gambling again with crits and wits of buffs to see if I can actually... Secure the kill before the shield forms for the second achievement. These achievements are so cool. They are by far... Most interesting- Oh, I made a bunch of these already, right, for that boss event. And then it would have to be... That's good. Gets her to about 90, which is about as much as I could ever theoretically need, and... Nice, we got the... Buff from that, and we're actually good to go. Nice. Two, three... Make sure that every... Pyro application gets vaped, and... Now this is going to be simple. Oh, nice! Okay, I wasn't too familiar with the mechanics, but yeah, that is very exciting for a tank build. Fight, one, two, three, fight, and one, two. Oh, the shield is gone. That is not good. Three, fight, and yeah, this. Those food buffs are making a very big difference. We need a bit of healing. Okay. Yeah, Moani, stay on here, we get healed. 
Oh, okay, that... That's unfair. To be fair, when I would play as a Blade Singer, my build was always built around getting really, really high AC. As you can stack Mage Armor with the Blade Singer abilities to become not unkillable, but certainly very hard to kill. It is... That said, it didn't help you all that much with saves, so it wasn't foolproof, but it was fun. Okay, two, three, fight, one, two, three, fight, one, two, three, fight, and let's go for the shot. And missile did not quite do it, but we're... We've got a good margin for error here. I'm not too worried. Come on. Stay out of the way there. Until you stop. There we go, and this is off with a couple more Milani bites. Bite. One more will do it. And. And we got the second Cosio achievement. And. Six things of raw meat, which is. <laughs> one heck of a reward for something that's troublesome. Defeat Cosio before he forms a Thunderflow and Shield. And that's on World Level 9. It's really good for almost anything. It's hard to get anything past that period. It... <sighs> 20 is about where things tend to max out functionally. Because if I recall correctly, plate is full plate's 18, then with a shield that's 20. But you can get Similar amounts from various unarmored defense. That's about as good as things are supposed to get. Yeah. It, it is interesting to think about sort of min-maxing things with medium armor. The fact that you can add your dexterity up to a point with medium armor is one of the few sorts of min-maxy things in 5e. Yeah. Oh, so the DM's getting into carry limit? Or... That and food tend to be things that normally get ignored. Though, to be fair, back when I played, I was still in high school, so all of us were, frankly, stupid kids. <laughs> yeah, it... I gotta... run D&D. Some other people, again, followers or whatever, just because... It's been a while and I miss it. I need it back in my life. Come on. Come on. Okay, so now we fight the Fatuilical Legends. And the goal this time is to kill the Pyro Slinger first. Also, we don't need the healing. We need Furina's minions. Hmm. But... I might have asked you this question already, but have you seen Capitano yet? I am interested, given that there have been conflicting reports over whether he- Oh, Capitano! The harbinger for this area. Conflicting reports on whether and how he'll be playable in this patch cycle. The big thing is that in the fight cutscene, he looks to have something- yeah, he's supposed to be the first of the Harbingers, and therefore the strongest. And then he kind of jobs, frankly. The big thing is, he... We, we see a little bit of his abilities, but it's interesting to think of, about how... Oh, come on. Oh, what? Oh. Okay, this is stupid. Uh, without any real hard defense up while we're breaking the shields. Yeah, because I could always use Baiju and his shield. The issue with that is that means not having it for healing. For the damage buff when we're doing Fiorina stuff. During our damage window. But we see a few of his abilities. And some of them, not saying too much appear similar enough to other Nalan characters that it's reasonable to think that he might be playable during this patch cycle. But quote-unquote leakers, who are always dubious at best, have said something, something he won't be playable, or at least not during 5.0, and 
To be fair, a lot of people said that Orlacuna would straight up die during Fontaine patches. Or that she would be a sword user, and we know how that turned out. Which is to say that neither of those things ended up being true. But it... He has a slightly different and bulkier model. He has, he has a bit of a Dark Souls feel to him, to lack of a better term. So, there are a lot of people who... You know, it's nice to get some novelty, so to speak, just... You know, some, some difference, especially since, as dumb as it sounds, being the biggest playable character would also make him by far the fastest. It's just walking and running around normally. And there's some meta in that, too. But, his element, though, is interesting to think about in terms of just character strength. And that broke you down. And... Hmm. Scroll that, and... Okay, come on, break your shield. And put this down. Use cause that is sweep them all up into one place. Thank you. Let's make use of this damage window. Try not to die. Goodness. So where is everybody? They're in the right place. Buzz you down again. Switch that out as quickly as possible. Should we get all of our bubbles? Thank you. So pretty soon they should be putting their shields back up. Uh, yep, now they're shielding up again. Means we just need to break those shields again. Come on. Just need to make sure we kill Vasily first while the shields are down. Ideally. Because when he dies, the others will get a huge attack buff. And then the final achievement, which I'll need to wait for them to respawn first, so that'll be tomorrow, presumably. I think I'll be doing this tomorrow. Have to be... Kill them all within 10 seconds of each other, as then you kill the last one. Max of 10 seconds after the first one you kill, which is interesting. Not crazy, especially with a team with good AoE like this. The funny thing is, is that the best way to fight these guys is by far an Ayaka team, I would say. Because the main thing is having a team with both Hydro and Kaza in it, so you can swirl things well and accurately, and oh goodness. Okay, no, that did break. Okay, we're actually in a good position here. So, let's make this happen. That's Pyro, which is not quite what I wanted, but that's life, I suppose. Come on. Just gotta see who we can kill first. Mm -hmm. And... Okay, yep, we killed Vasily, which means the only ones left are going to be these guys. And I... Oh, well, that's death to you. Come on. Don't like this. Don't like this. Gotta make sure you stay down. Do not put up your... Uh, do not put your shield up, and we did it! Kaza got lots along the way, and so did Nuviat, but a win's a win. An achievement's an achievement. Yeah, this on world level 9. Legitimately ridiculous. So now it's defeat him after breaking his shield without getting hit, which is basically just use Tina to use... Probably, you could use other people with or cryo bow stuff. Linny could work, maybe, but I think Tinati would probably be the best, because he can rapid fire his level 2 charges anyway. Yep, defeat the Polychrome Tri-Stars within 10 seconds of defeating the first member. They do drop a good amount of their Fatui Insignias, but it's... Fatui Insignias are a dime a dozen after three and a half years of this game I've got. Well, about three and a quarter, three and a third years of this game I've got. More than I can shake a stick at. So it's... Not exactly like I'm in need of a bunch. And frankly, given how painful they are, the amount they drop is not exactly worth it. So other than those guys, the only local legends I've got are the Night Soul Totem ones. I think I'll do Klee's little minigame first. Okay. Thank you. Get that healing back and... Gotta be somewhere over in Mondstadt, I presume. Probably by the library. So, it might not be any indication, but... In the event preview, they did say that there would basically be a casual mode, which 
suggests to me that the main gameplay will be tough enough to be worth, you know, to necessitate giving people who don't want to engage with the gameplay a mode that just makes things easy for the rewards, which I am fine with that approach. Because I pursue hard gameplay for its own sake, so if people just want to collect their Prima Gems, more power to them. As long as I still get the challenge I want. Dota goes boom bass to cast pains, and I still don't have Klee. While visiting Monset's gardens, you and Paimon discover a novel tabletop game featuring the adorable and lively Dodoko. It's Kui, Ayaka, Ayato, Ito, and Kokomi, and then Niulu, who I still don't have. That did not stop me from buying the Niulu skin. It'll be a while until that's notable for me. The quest, talk to the two knights while passing by Quiet Garden and Monset. A couple knights were discussing a new game, drawing your and Paimon's attention. Hmm. So they're just down there, and if I recall correctly, Lisa and Albedo... Well, Lisa is not involved here. And I don't think Kui is either, but these knights... I think these might be the ones who are involved with the explosives, and yeah, it's Phonia. The explosives nerd. Talks about... Shaped charges. Well, she did in an event that was about a year ago. Another Dotoko puzzle minigame event. wasn't I forget the name of the specific phenomenon shape charge uses the the moon row or newman effect the focusing of blast energy by a hollow or void cut onto the surface of an explosive they also talk about the difference between deflagration and detonation basically about a year ago, they talked about the fact that the only explosives that at least Monset people can muster, though I think Fontaine is probably better since they're higher tech and definitely the Fatui, they deflagrate instead of detonate while Kui's detonate, which given Alice's nature is probably a descender, suggests that basically Alice's and Kui's magic is really more just sort of a sufficiently advanced technology sort of thing, if you've heard that phrase, but sort of... Monstat Explosive Deflag Rate, which is essentially they catch fire and burn up at subsonic speeds. Whereas Detonation is supersonic and therefore part of the explosion is a sonic boom. Come on, Phonia, come on, don't you want to be known as the first player to ever experience the Marvel? That is Dodico's boom bastic escapades. Come on, go on, you know you want to. An all new combat mode that's more flexible than ever before, allowing you to not only achieve pinpoint precise demolition. But also outsmart crafty enemies while you're at it. How could that not be an absolute blast? So basically the casual mode, if I recall correctly, is going to be more or less not having to deal with the enemies. How about no? Just because you spend all day fantasizing about bombs doesn't mean the rest of us do too. Heck, helping you out by getting the prototype and tabletop game up and running already counts as some serious overtime. All I want to do now is order some takeout from the good hunter, then return to the comfort of my humble abode. By the time it arrives, I'll just finish the last of the laundry, and it'll finally be time to kick back and relax. Hmm. So the laundry. It's for this new Boom Shack a Lacking, Lacking game of yours. Cut Shack a Lacking. Well, next time we're on ship together, I might give it a go. If I'm already bored out of my mind, what harm could it do anyway? Did you just say the words new and game together in the same sentence? Paimon's curious now. Could we take a look? Wait a minute, is that you, Honorate Knight, and their helper in white are actually here? What are the chances? Remember now, you're the Bombaholic, and you are Bombaholic. You know who I am, Honorary Knight, and I think... There's one of them who showed up in this sort of real-time strategy military war game event a couple of patches ago, but I forget which one. I think it was Phonia. I must really have left an impression to ring Annihilate the Invasive Anglers, even you've heard about me. I promise I won't let you down. Recently, I've been making ongoing improvements to the formula and design of my bombs, striving to narrow the gap between me and the Spark Knight, and that is Kui, bit by bit, boom by boom, exactly. I'm trying to make bombs that detonate instead of deflagrate. Anyway, after the previous operation, Emma Toll concluded that relying solely on long-distance bomb deployment had considerable tactical shortcomings and wasn't effective enough at dealing with certain types of obstacles in cover. So, short range? So she began experimenting with some new equipment. 
aerial dropping, or did I set out? We even made some improvements to the Sparknet's beloved tabletop game. That's right, and in recent days, after analyzing the Sparknet's combat strategy, I've come up with another way to use the bombs. If we were the Spark Knight, the solution would probably be if a single bomb's worth of explosives isn't enough, use three. If a lone Jumpy Dumpty can't solve the issue, throw three. And yes, increased start firepower is a surefire way to solve the problem, but for run of the mill knights like us, that just isn't isn't an option. We simply can't compete with the Spark Knight's Jumpty Dumpties and their boom factor. So we focused on improving flexibility and accuracy to make up for the lack of power. Our thinking was that if we could create some track targets and get close enough to lay down bombs. Basically, this is drone combat. We could strike dangerous targets with pinpoint accuracy and thereby maximize the load. Tracking enemies and laying down bombs sounds pretty impressive, but also kind of scary. Palmon were a hillotrol chasing down a forest boy with her hillotrol buddies, and suddenly all the thingamajig popped out of nowhere. Threw a bomb in our faces, she'd probably be so terrified she'd faint. That actually sounds pretty cool. Can I have one? My hunch was right. You're an explosives enthusiast just like me. But this new device is still in the early stages of testing. It'll take some time before it's ready for official production and use. I'll give it everything I've got. Given that conducting experiments in the wild would harm Monsat's natural ecosystem and how this isn't important enough to justify us bothering Captain Albedo, it wasn't worth the trouble of applying for a testing ground. After Amatol asked for my advice, we settled on a small-scale simulation prototype to test the controls and explosive capabilities. It just so happened that we thought of an old tabletop game that would make the perfect foundation for such testing, so Amatol dragged me off to find Lisa. Thank goodness we did, with Lisa's enthusiastic support, advice, and even some help with the storyline, the end result is amazing. The dog behold on this game table before your very eyes, the much-awaited sequel to Dodoko's bombastic adventure, Dodoko's boombastic escapades. Bomb versus boom. For mastering the art of close-range demolition, Dodoko and her special Jumpty Dumpties are back with an explosively volatile vengeance. Here to follow our commands and obliterate hordes of resurgent enemies. Bear witness to an epic battle of wits between Dodico and the Spiky Fish King, and as you do. It's interesting, the anglers are back, because the last event, the context was that a Sumeru merchant had brought these anglers, which are normally only found in Sumeru and a little bit in Fontaine, and accidentally introduced an invasive species, and it was basically practice for eliminating them. And as you do, immerse yourself in intense action and joyous destruction while helping us record valuable test data for a new device, of course. Oh, so that's the game we've been working on, huh, Imatol? The latest installment in the Dodoko vs. Spiky Fish Saga. Seems like the Honorary Knight and the Helper in White are pretty excited about it, Imatol. Their feedback will no doubt prove it invaluable. I can tell. If they'd be willing to spend some of their precious time playing, I'd be eternally grateful. Does that mean we'll be the first to play? You're not forgetting someone, are you? Given that's the follow-up to the Dodoko vs. Spiky Fish story, wouldn't the Spark Knight herself be the most suitable game tester of all? Uh, well, considering that Dodoko features in the new game, that would of course be a true honor. But I wanted to make sure that Dodoko's boombastic escapades is as incredible an experience as possible with as few flaws as is humanly possible, such that by the time the Spark Knight gets the chance to play it. Ah, uh, Pomelon's got it, you're saying that this time we'll have multiple roles. Not only are we helping you test out your new device, but we're also acting as game testers, making sure that Klee will love it. Sounds right up my street in the name of Klee and fun games too. Wonderful, I'd say we're getting on like an exploding house on fire. That might not be so good, wouldn't you agree? Just the thought of watching you guys play gets me so pumped right now. Anyway, let's get the show on the road. Okay, the stage details will include information on the stage environment, types of spiky fish you might encounter, buffs, and other things. Carefully check those details to help Dodoko defeat the spiky fish more effectively. Shoom Shoom Shoes, Boom Boom Bandoliers, and Crash Cling Canisters. Are the three buff types that Dodoko can pick up? They boost movement speed, maximum bomb capacity. Oh, this is basically Bomberman. Explosion AoE. Welcome back. These buffs are hidden among the steady state seagrass. Additionally, Dodoko's improved attributes can be viewed in the status bar on the right. Yeah, this is basically just Bomberman. Dodoko's vitality when attacked by spiky fish or when hit by explosions, losing vitality will grant a temporary immunity to damage, pick up little bandages to restore vitality. Defeat all the spiky fish to achieve victory. Alright. What do you have to say? The sparks fly and the explosions roll on a night and the helper in mind. How are you enjoying, enjoying Dodoko's boom best campaigns? I'd be happy to answer your questions whenever you feel like asking them. Care to tell us more about the story behind the latest episode of Dodoko's adventure? Absolutely, I'd be delighted to. Lisa may be responsible for the sequel. She came up with a load of ideas about the plot. The big bad spiky fish king, repelled by the valiant Dodoko, slunk back to his lair, tail between his metaphorical legs. Yeah, that... What is interesting about Action Surge... Is that it's one of the... If you want to multi-class in a caster... Welcome. 
Action Surge would actually be pretty useful because because it's the only way to actually cast multiple sort of full action spells per round. Because casting Haste on yourself does not allow you to use the cast a spell option. It allows you to do more attacks, but only one weapon attack, so it's only so good for fighters even. But it can actually be pretty good on a Blade Singer for the sake of actually making more attacks given that they have fewer to begin with. it Multi-classing is generally not that good in 5e, but it's something to think about. The Spiky Fish Vanguard said to him, Your Highness, why don't we gather all the Spiky Fish Elders, Spiky Fish Guards, and Spiky Fish Sweepers and watch an unstoppable counterattack. As for how the story pans out, it's probably best if you experience it yourself on a night. After all, I wouldn't want to spoil the surprise. Tension's building. Go, go, Dodeco. If your DM wants to use supplementary material, it could be interesting to check out Brute. Because it's similar to Champion in that it's just nothing complicated, you just hit them harder. But, generally speaking, it's more combat suited. Would be worth looking into if you were interested in tensions building. Go, go, Dodico. We're rooting for you, Dodico. What does Phonia have to say? Greetings, Honorary Knight, and the Helper in White. I'm not technically on duty right now, but I can't go home yet. Thanks to this extracurricular project that Amatol has given me. Extracurricular project... Basically, she's worried her record of her experience playing Dodeco's boom basic escapades might not suffice, so she wanted me to take some extra recordings. Yeah, phony, like, gramophone, basically. Well, you two really are close, aren't you? The way I see it, this is just a way of being some credit so Emma Tault might actually feel guilty the next time she plays a prank on me. Oh, well, Petman's not sure she actually will, but at least it adds another layer to her relationship. And... What else? The recording and the explosion. Emma Tall. What's that name? What's it based on? A mission, maybe? Let me see. Nothing said. Oh, it's upon an amatol, a highly explosive material made from a mixture of TNT and ammonium nitrate. Monfonia, why not? But you think I'm taking it too seriously. People often say that my responses are a bit too by the book, boring even. But I'm just trying to cut down unnecessary communication so I get some peace and quiet. Ah, uh, Travel, we should probably go now. So then we can try out the minigame proper. Anyway, keep up the good work. Thank you and have fun. Once we're done with all the recording, it'll finally be time for this Kagan machine to get some rest. Also, earlier I beat the second layer of achievements of the Turtle Local Legend and the Fitui Trio Local Legend. Fitui Trio being kill the Pyroslinger first, the Turtle one being kill it before it forms its shield. The shield one, it just required some crit food and a Hydro damage boost potion, and then just sending Milani out against it. But and it wasn't too bad. I'm gonna take a break now, but I'll be back. No problem. I'm not going anywhere. So whenever you're ready, honorary night. It did. Well, Casiho, at least on higher world levels, is basically just a Milani check. The magic trick and multiple kabooms, because she is by far the character that is most single big hit as a source of damage. Is just Zhongli from a distance, so it didn't actually hit it. Put a shield up for shred and damage resistance. And then, if you're any in the party for Hydra Reds to give Milani a bit more HP and also healing if necessary, idea for the slow pyro application needed, and then Milani for damage. It wasn't bad at all. The Fatoy Trio one is always painful, but the newbie theory team with Baiju and Kazo, interestingly enough, Shilinen might end up being a replacement for Baju in those teams to increase its damage. Though it would make it a bit less durable. I would say do those. Do those then. Probably. Bombs are dangerous with Dota Coat and Spiky Fish, so stay safe and take cover promptly. Once you understand how bombs work, you too can accomplish the feat of Dota Coats don't look at explosions. Ordinary Spiky Fish. Spiky Fish warriors that don't have any special abilities and only engage in close combat. If they run Dota Coat during their patrol, they will deal damage to Dota Coat. Composite stone, it is said that the thick rocks layered with hard crystals and sand can continually withstand the impact of explosions, making them sturdy cover for both Dodoko and spiky fish. Steady state sea grass can only withstand one blast. Once destroyed, it may reveal items hidden within. From formidable fish formation, formations used by spiky fish warriors to invade other areas. Once the formation lights up, it will summon spiky fish warriors. Dodoko cannot place bombs on it. Shum shum shoes increases Dodoko's movement speed. Boom boom bandoliers increases the number of bombs Dodoko can carry. A little bandage restores one vitality for Dodoko. This will not take effect when vitality is full. But this is basically just Bomberman, if you're familiar. 
Hmm. What is the range on these bombs? Both mouse to place bomb. And... Oh, okay. It's actually very, very... Simple. Small AoE too. Get rid of that. Blocked pretty well. Hmm. Not sure what would actually increase the range of the bomb. But, quite frankly, there's no reason not to just boost my stats up to maximum before going and hitting them. Doesn't seem like there's any kind of time limit here. And yep, it's locked the grid, more or less. Okay. Got one. I think they regenerate over time, right? There we are. It's out of the way, and oh, well, I may be stupid. Okay, we have to do ten of them. What is you? Oh, that just gives you status details. Alright, cool. There we are, Bomberman event. And there we go. A few more of these. Simple enough. Oh, wow. Then. Yo, if it works, it works. Thank you, and just one more. Hi. Gotcha! Any other bonuses? Challenge without exhausting vitality. So the only rewards are just... Don't die. Because if you die, you can keep going. And that's the easy mode. One charge of propellant ain't enough to solve things. They really are. But I, I still don't have Klee. Explosions that can penetrate secrets not only leave enemies with nowhere to hide, but also expand Dodoko Zone Danger Zone. Be very careful and don't stand the trajectory of an armor-piercing munition. Interestingly enough, the only team that Kui is really worth using on these days is apparently Furina. Forward Vape. I did too. The only ones I don't have are Jeans and Ganyus, and the funny thing is that those are both characters I have. I have... Three skins for characters I don't have. Nilu, Ayaka, and... <sighs> Klee. In the hopes of getting them eventually. Did he buy it officially or through something like Taobao? Okay, expand Dodoko Zone Danger Zone. Be very careful and don't stay in the trajectory of an armor-piercing piercing munition. That crash cooling canisters increases the explosion AoE of Dodoko bombs. Because I know they've started putting out their merch officially, making it easier to get. I didn't know there were Klee AirPods. Claire Pods. Now that's two. Let's go to stay on the diagonal. Cool. Bandage won't do much, but we still pick it up anyway. It is what it is. That's nice. Just gotta make sure we get all the way out of the way, and- Oh, interesting. We were close enough that it made us jump. Just want to see how crazy this AoE is going to get. Well, to be fair... I, w I would generally presume that buying it unofficially is going to be more expensive because you've got a middleman involved. That's the thing. Oh, what? Huh? It forced me onto that grid. This may be stupid. Come on. And I- Huh? Maybe I'm cooked. I don't really know what's up with this, honestly. Oh, oh, so is in- you mean bootlegs. I'd say it's one thing if it's bootlegs and another thing if it's just reselling the original stuff. You know, because a bootleg is gonna cost less logically, but... If you're buying the official product through a middleman, then it would probably cost a good deal more. Can outrun shrapnel. When the eager spiky fish rush over, Dodoko can either turn or free or and flee or drop a bomb to make the opponent collide head on. The wall of shrapnel and flames. Sprinting spiky fish. Spiky fish warriors might have no spikes, but they're still prickly characters when they discover Dodoko. Sprint in Dodoko's direction. I... A year ago, I don't think they were selling their official merch overseas at all. 
They were probably buying it off something like Taobao, which is not their official store. Tending Keen Sight grants Dodoko the ability to see buffs her opponents hidden within the seagrass. Spiky Fish Warriors might not know spikes, but they're still prickly characters. When they discover Dodoko, they will sprint in Dodoko's direction. Alright. Put this down. We can take you out. Thank you. See who and what is hidden. Who set up a little. It is fun to me that they decide to make an event that really was just Bomberman. I never really got into or played Bomberman. There was one that came out on Switch some years ago that was one of the first games to really come out on Switch, period. But it wasn't one I picked up. It, it is interesting how the time after Mario 64, a lot of companies try to put out sort of Mario 64 type 3D platforming adventures, even for games that properties that arguably didn't make sense. Well, it... that's just normal. Because the way it happens is just in places generally poorer countries sort of boutique independent game shops will sell things early for a quick buck because they more or less have to and you know if they get found out then they stop getting supplied but it's just sort of that's the risk and reward there that's the material situation but whenever things leak before street date that is generally the way and the reason that happens. Okay. Pull you up. Good bandolier. Put you down. That goes far enough to make that work. Okay. Well, it... I mean, sad for who? The multi-million dollar corporation? Armor, armor fall apart. Although armored spiky fish can withstand two explosions, they're just small fry and makeshift armor. Plant your bomb blast carefully and still make them feel the heat. I I'm not sure how much I agree, but I have heard people criticize spoiler culture. Armored spiky fish, mighty spiky fish wars, wearing armor of unknown origin, or perhaps simply made from underwater detritus. You can deal damage to them after destroying their armor. If they run into Dodoko during their patrol, they will deal damage to Dodoko. That more or less hits... Spoiler culture, quote-unquote, some people said is basically just sort of a FOMO thing. And that it encourages you to basically engage with current thing as quickly as possible so to avoid spoilers, even if you might not necessarily want to or might have other things you want to do. Mighty Spiky Fish Warriors wearing armor of unknown origin or perhaps simply made for underwater detritus. You can deal damage to them after destroying their armor if they run to Dodoko during the patrol. You will deal damage to Dodoko. Yeah, exactly. Spoiler alert. The Legend of Zelda features Zelda. Exactly. It... There... Some interest... There, there were some people joking that this one should be Legend of Link, given that Zelda is the playable character. Then I would cry. I would die of fright. I can't believe you would say that to me. Oh, and okay. Right, right, we can get ourselves stuck or we're stupid about it. Because this really is Bomberman. Okay. It wasn't the right direction. Though, to be fair, it's not exactly the most emblematic of them. For one, it has actual gameplay. Oh, come on. I actually hedged myself in. Epic Bomberman moment. Come on. It's actually getting kind of spicy. Big thing is just... It goes down on my... spot instead of... going behind it. I mean, or in front. But... I watched... I saw a video last night that was about how... Oh, what? I didn't mean to place down another. Oh, I'm so cooked. 
whatever. Maybe I don't have the capacity for this right now. But it's putting down multiple bombs at once. Hmm. It's interesting. Because I'll try to focus on putting down one at a time. If you were going for speed, you'd want to put down multiple, but I'm not really going for speed here. Come on. Hit. This could line up a whole array of them to make sure they can catch them all out at once. And that does not do anything for me anymore. Come on. Okay, but they have a sort of mercy invincibility, so you can't get multiple hits in no matter what you do. Even if you hit them two bombs at once, the armor is still going to protect them. Guess that makes sense. Okay, cool. And I still took that hit. Again, maybe I am cooked. At least, at least I can still fight local legends. That, that's all instinct. It's not brain power, it's pure instinct. You can keep the bomb as a gift. After bomb spiky fish disappear, bombs that have already been lit may not obey Dodoko's commands. Therefore, we need to think carefully about when and where to place the bombs. Bomb spiky fish. Halberd wielding fish warriors are called spiky, but have in truth no spikes. Yeah. There are also explosive enthusiasts who will never stop deploying bubble bombs. Bubble bombs will deal damage to Dodoko and can detonate bombs that Dodoko has placed. Hmm. Interesting. After obtaining Hollow Charge, Dodoko's bombs will be upgraded as self-forged warheads, gaining the ability to penetrate seagrass and opponents, doing damage to all opponents within the explosion AoE. Additionally, self-forged warheads created via the Hollow Charge upgrade will Dodoko to directly penetrate armor and deal damage to armored spiky fish. Spiky fish warriors may have no spikes, but they're still prickly characters. They are also explosive enthusiasts. Never stop deploying bubble bombs. Bubble Bombs will do damage to Dodoko, I'm getting nine bombs at Dodoko's place. Surely Bubble Bombs will not damage Spiky Fish Warriors or Seagrass. It's basically about getting inside the... ...place to start blowing up the Seagrass. Okay. Who are we going to try to hit? Oh, goodness. Thank you, and... oh my lord. That was a bad idea, too. Okay, so now we have this. We can actually penetrate the seagrass, which is exciting. Come on. It's down here, and hopefully, get a hit off. There we go. So now it really is Bomberman. They've actually started taking me on themselves. Get more of that out. It. I feel like destroying all of the seagrass. It's my personal goal here. How big are their bombs? They got a radius of two, it seems. Interesting. Thank you. Let's increase our radius a little. And, ah, I thought I'd be able to stay out of the way of that. There we are, that was good. Stay out of the way of the cross. We're increasing our radius really well. Take you down. And just use that to stop you in your tracks. Thank you. How are we gonna do this? Yep, hit you right through. Won't damage the seagrass, that is fine. Okay. Hit you, and oh goodness. Blast you as well. Okay, but they don't have a way to increase their bomb radius, which is good. That would be aggravating. Got you. Try this again. Hit. Hit. Pull you up. And manage to hit them right through. We're getting some pretty ridiculous radius now. Wonder where it maxes out. Should be able to get to 9 or something, which is crazy. Well, I I was trying to get all the power-ups. I actually want to do that again because I didn't destroy all the grass. <laughs> as dumb as that sounds, my goal here is get rid of the grass and I didn't manage that because I accidentally got a kill and I was not looking for a kill quite literally suffering from success okay I'm gonna focus on getting my buffs and destroying grass mm -hmm. Genshin player when asked to touch grass chooses to destroy it instead 
Though to be fair, choosing to destroy it also means that these enemies are going to get in my way more than I would like. Come on. Come on. Will you up? Make sure that the radius does not cause me problems. Try not to get caught in my own bomb. Come on. I'm taking a bit more damage this time, too, which is not really the ideal situation. Come on. Up like this. This out, and... Not placing too many bombs, but... Goal is not killing right now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hit. Hit. The piercing effect really does help here. Thank you. Oh, we got that entire line. Lovely. And at this point, we're just zooming. You know, I didn't even really think to check, but... It is notable that we don't have any way to really do anything on a diagonal. So that's maxed out. We got everything here. Okay. And... You just snipe them. This is a bit excessive. Come on. This... There was a game I played... Back in the day called Spiral Knights, which was an MMO, not really Zelda-like, more of a Diablo-type game. Well, this is basically almost as complicated as it gets, because this was level 5. It's only got 6. Keep the bombs a gift. Batty's Flaming Feast, after mastering the use of various bombs, Dodica was no longer afraid of any spiky fish villains, no matter how many of them, many of them or how cunning they are, let's treat them to a Flaming Feast. At this point, I might as well be. Right, right, right. After obtaining this, Dodico's bombs will upgrade the self forge warheads, gaining the ability to penetrate the aggressive opponents, and damage all opponents within the explosion AoE. Additionally, self forge warheads created via the hollow charge upgrade will allow Dodico to directly penetrate armor and deal damage to armored spiky fish. But it had it had three weapon types: handguns, swords, and bombs. And there were a couple of bombs that. Originally, the way they worked was they would put down shards. They would shoot out shards in various directions, which meant they were actually better as sort of sniping weapons than they were as AOV explosions. So you could put them far away and just snipe with the shards, and then they were changed significantly, making them worse. This is before I actually even started playing, where they basically put down a sort of lingering AOE of well, crystal shards, which was not how people liked, liked them anyway, and they became a lot less useful and a lot less unique, but in the original state, because they shot out stuff in relatively quickly in four directions, I think it was, four, it was either four or eight, either just cardinal directions or on a basic diagonal in addition. You know, sort of four compass directions versus eight compass directions. They were a bit like Bomberman, and I would imagine that it was essentially the idea behind them originally. Oh, interesting. Can we... Okay. We can't hit them while they're still in the seagrass, even with our piercing munition. It would be an interesting game for me to try to go back to eventually. It... It's very emblematic of how a lot of games can just... Work. Oh, nice. Burrito enchilada. What are all the ingredients in that? I... I really am cooked. But it's completely clear now, so all there is to do is just take out the fish. You know, what I could do is just... Pull all those up and then get behind cover. Oh, well, also they'll blow my bombs up themselves and just die. I said maybe. I said it would be interesting, but I don't think I would. Because it is a very mu very much a dead game. And the kind of game that you would prefer, prefer to play with other people instead of just by yourself. But the big funny story I have to tell about it is that they had a, a player marketplace. And I made a lot of money back in... Oh, that's fun. Cheese, enchilada, onion, meat, cheese, beans. Huh. wonder what's in the enchilada sauce. But as I was saying... Are you familiar with the economic concept of arbitrage? Well, arguably it's more of a finance concept than an economics concept. 
But essentially, it's the idea that you can make a guaranteed profit by taking advantage of differing exchange rates. You know, because basically, if, for example, if someone is buying an apple for 10 bucks, and someone else is, for the sake of argument, selling apples for 5 bucks, can buy an apple for 5 bucks, sell it to the guy, other guy for 10 bucks, and make an unambiguous, sort of perfect, pure profit of $5. Barring the cause of actually doing the work there. It's the Batty Swung Feast Stage and the Doku's Boom Bass Escapades event. But the main thing about Spiral Knights is that after an update, because originally they had it as two currency systems, but after the update, they got rid of the second currency system, more or less. And just, at least partially. The big thing is that they were premium items that you could buy using... The normal in-game currency, too. Well, sure. But eventually the cops would catch on and stop you. Whereas if you just kept making the $5 profit, you could do it indefinitely without running afoul of the law. But as I was saying... Don't worry, I understood the joke. But... Essentially, in order to effectively... The game's equivalent of weapon ascensions, which also were more of an evolution. Basically, there were items you needed to level up, or basically change the form of a weapon. And some of them were premium items that were generally tough to get, to the point where that you would prefer to buy them. As in, in Spyro Knights or in this game? I'm not free to play in this game. But, as I was saying, it's, but for me, it's just Battle Pass and Welcome for now. But as I was saying, you go and you get those Weapon Ascension items in that game, more or less. But people would buy them, oftentimes. Okay, this, I have the story slightly long. Basically, you could convert your free-to-play currency into premium currency by buying it from players on the marketplace. The exchange rate was not set. It was set by the players and what they were willing to buy and sell. But you could then turn that premium currency into items for a set. Oh, bell pepper. Bell pepper or jalapeno. And then you could sell those premium items back to other players in the, in the free-to-play currency. And you could oftentimes sell... If you were willing to wait and take advantage of the exchange rates, you could make some pure profit by selling the orbs, the alchemy orbs what they were is what they were called, for more of the crowns, which were the basic free-to-play coins, than you spent to get the energy, the crystal energy, which was the premium currency, to buy the alchemy orbs. And there are limits to how many things you could have on the auction house, and I don't imagine the game has enough churn, or even any as enough player base total to actually run this grift anymore, but... That, and I was in 7th grade when I did this. I would just buy the orbs, sell the orbs, buy the orbs with premium currency, sell the orbs with crowns, convert the crowns back into crystal energy, convert the free-to-play currency to premium currency, and just slowly but surely make a pure profit, which was quite nice. Also, I took a loan from another player that I never paid back. But that's a much simpler story. That's basically the entire story. I joined a guild, someone gave me a loan, and I just never paid it back. Well, also, I could start some of the world quests right now, but also there were a couple of things I wanted to explore real quick. There were a couple of... Yeah. Middle schoolers are mean. Middle schoolers are quite mean. Not necessarily through malice, but just thoughtlessness. Okay. Well, there were a couple of caves I found myself into partially, but I didn't want to explore them too much off stream. I imagine that they're related to some of the world quests. Well, it's because they're old enough to have some level of rudimentary intelligence, but generally not old enough to have enough life experience to understand 
more or less, quote unquote, how people should be treated. Well, that's because people were mean to you. So you didn't get any chances to be mean to other people. It's hard to be mean to other people if they've already shoved you in a trash can. Can't really say much. Well, it... It's true. Okay. You literally said that happened. Okay, so I wonder what's in this cave over here. This is... What is this? Well, yeah. In that case, what objection? It's publicly available information. One, two, three. Well, that's unfortunate. Oh, we got another golden whistle. So what is down here? This is... Oh, an ancient excavation site. Interesting. Some warriors in here. I would imagine that A, this is part of the world quest, and B, we can't really go all the way through here right now. Okay. What is this? I think there are going to be some ruins in here eventually. Yeah, so do they just keep you in there and have you walk around with a trash can on your head or something? Is that what happened? Hmm. There's an encampment over there. Main thing is... Best way to scale this would be... Presumably just letting Kachina go around. Using Primos or just Blue Fates you've already got? Who are you going for specifically? Dia? If so... Incredibly base. Oh. Oh, oh, it's in hard, hard pity. Okay. Sorry, I was mistaken for a second. But, I suppose we'll see who you get then. Hopefully it'll be worth it. Other thing is, the Tepe with Source can't go into lava, right? Don't imagine. Yeah. So we'd have to use Milani, maybe. Which because there aren't any Koholosaurs around here. So I wonder how I'm supposed to get through this spot. Okay. So at this point you're just sort of getting sick of it and you're just sort of I wanna see what I get. I can respect that. But I, on the other hand, am an inveterate collector, and I want to have everyone eventually, which means I can't afford to spend anything on... Anything other than... Standard and... Oh, okay, well... Can kinda go in. We have to sort of sprint past this. We're going to Molten Fissures and move swiftly. Where is the fissure? Oh, nice! And who was it? Oh, well, that's interesting. There's a pillar just waiting here. Exciting. Oh, so this is how. Yeah, who was it? Swiftly. So let's go into the Night Kingdom. Let's find another local legend. Hmm. That was fun to encounter. This is Trial of Resilience. Oh, it's the Perry one! Yes! So would that be Diona? Trial of Resilience, you'll be unable to use elemental skills or burst, but you will gain a new elemental skill, Parry. When you use Parry, you will raise your weapon up in a defensive posture, greatly decreasing damage dealt to you. The skull is a fixed cooldown. At the timing down, Parry just the opponent is attacked and completely negate the damage you should have taken. Reset Parry cooldown. Okay. Otwaddle's blessing. Big thing is... <sighs> Fizz damage sword... The best way to do this is to boost your Fizz damage up, which is possible. My question is, is Perry going to count as skill damage? Yeah. Don't think it could be gone, yo. Just going to boost my crit damage. I don't have Black Cliff boosted. I guess it's just Skyward then. Fair. Understandable. So, actually, what I want to see is... How much damage will my parry deal if I... 
Also, you are still at Hydro. Oh, we couldn't dodge that. Oops. 197. How much damage is the Piri going to do like this? Oh my goodness. Oops. Let's try that again. Revive. How much damage is this going to deal with? Artifacts versus no artifacts. Hmm. Okay. Come on. It's an interesting one. Oh, huh. Gotta get close then. And... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Nice. And ah, uh, we can reach our surging boy. It's one, three, five, five, four, seven. Okay. So I wonder if I'm gonna get any more damage out of it if I put on the pale flame set I've currently got in Fremen A. That's my question. Far away enough that it's not instantly starting. Hmm. So if I put on Pale Flame, will we get any boost? The big thing is, they're guaranteed crits. I did see someone saying that could meaningfully boost your damage. Because in this fight, you've actually got stuff equipped. All the other times we've had parries, it's completely ignored gear. But we've got gear on right now. That's why I've given him Skyward. Though, like I said, I bet Blackcliff would be better if I had Blackcliff leveled. Just because it's the only crit damage sword I have access to. It's not what I'm doing right now. Let's see how much more damage those blades deal. This is a fun one. Someone did this fight with their, with their eyes closed, purely based on audio cues once. This is interesting, conceptually. It's a bit more damage. Oh, Rust! That's a good one. Well, it can be. One, two, three, I Oh, never mind. Oh, that sucked. Yeah. Nice. And... Oh, yeah, we are doing much more damage. Okay, that's nice. Yeah, we're doing about two and a half times more damage. Okay. Okay. Oh, well, that is not a parable attack. I... If you really want to see, sure. But it's always better to save up for limited banners, because you can get anything from standard on limited anyway. And that hit. Good stuff. Need to stay close. We parry, we can. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Come on. I mean, it's your account and your life to live, but I always save on standard. I mean, save up. And don't roll on standard. Nice. Just gonna keep on hitting. The idea is to do this without getting hit, which you could do. By just dodging the projectile attack. Nice. Okay, this. This is good. Cool. Good stuff. And also, to get a damage boost from Sky Piercing Might, too. Effect on Skyward Blade. So, we'll just do this a couple more times. That was fun to just bump into. We try that challenge, and now it's glowing. A little. Now we have to do this. Well, we got the achievement now. That's... Defeat local legend Atlatl's Blessing. During the course of completing a single challenge, use parry to counteract all of Atlatl's Blessing's power attacks and inflict damage, which means every time it uses one, we gotta parry it. Okay. Cool. And then there's one where you just don't get hit. Okay. And... One, two, three... Well, these aren't power attacks, so... I don't know. Nice. So this is a way to sort of avoid the power attack issue, I suppose. By just continuing to hit it. Okay. But. Nice. Cool. Is that to charge up our... 
Nice. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Come on. I. Nice. Could carry that, presumably. It's the power attacks that have a glow to it. Similar to the perfect dodge one. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So the important thing is whenever it did a power attack, which wasn't that often, we did manage to parry it. Good. That, that's a better idea. Also, you get the fun of exploring things. So the one that's going right now is... This one right over there. So the closest one to our starting point is... The All Idols of Blessing, I guess, maybe, because they thought that the parry was the most emblematic. I wouldn't necessarily disagree. Okay. So now we need to do this without taking any damage. Well, defeat All Idols of Blessing without taking any damage from attacks. Let's see. Shouldn't be too bad, I hope. Stay the right distance. It's a gap at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Main thing is it's real tough to actually parry that projectile attack when you're at close range. And nice, and we didn't hit. Oh well. Yeah, because the attack, the counter attack is good, but you need to be close to actually hit with it. Okay. And... Nice! We actually hit with that too. One more burst should do the trick. And now we need to... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Nice. This will be... The last burst we need. Get that back up for no good reason. And now that's... Everything. Cool. So, that Night Soul Totem is fully specced out now, too. It's only just a couple more. Period. I could definitely get the Duelist Series 1 achievement by the end of the stream event, which is the first half of the patch cycle. Thank you! So it's just these two who I need to find, and then Tristars and Casillo. Each have one more achievement left, which shouldn't be too bad. Well, like I said, there are six challenges we have access to right now, and then beyond that, one, two, three, four, five. Five more, and presumably what, whatever's in the center. But I wonder what the boss would presumably be for the big obelisk. There's, there's gotta be one. There's gotta be some aspect of recognition when you manage to at least beat every single one of them. I imagine you just have to beat every single one of them to get the final boss of whatever this is. Not necessarily just... Not necessarily get every achievement, though I would imagine there's gotta be some recognition for that, too. Main thing is, we need to indwell. Oh, presumably you're meant to use the climb as a way to get past this. And now I see. It's the climb on the wall on the side. Get over that way. Yeah, that makes sense. Go into that fissure and see where it takes us. Also, since unless you were using one of the characters, you wouldn't be able to go over the molten Phlogiston crystals. You'd be hard while they're actually climbing, which means either Kachina or a Shulanen or then a Tepet with Sora. Oh, but all that does is take you over to the totem. Well, it's not bad. This is all that's here right now, the ancient e excavation site, but I imagine that it's going to be World Quest related, so we've also got an extraction facility around here. Some Fatui, so we'll check that out next, and maybe, maybe they'll even give us another local legend side there. Because other than that, we just have... One of them, and I know that one of them is over here in Huitzli, I think. So I do want to look around there. It's... I don't want to look one up. I looked up Casio. Well, it's more that someone 
I accidentally found out how Casio works. But the joy of just stumbling onto Otwaddles and knowing it would be Otwaddles was quite nice, but this is basically the place where the Fatui do a bunch of sussy experiments on Saurians, unconscious Yumkasaur. Oh, I bet if I possess a dragon I could talk to them. Oh well. Hi. One, two, and oh well. Let's try not to activate your shield. Oh come on. Getting clunky on the terrain. And two, three, bite before you do anything. Just about to do that. We'll stop that. Trapping sort of rule. And a unconscious Kohosaur. Extraction Research Center Passage. This is where they study Phlogiston. Just in case you thought that the Vitui were good guys instead of anti-heroes, I suppose. But wh what's life without a little mad science? Where is... Oh, you're down here. Hello. Thank you, and... One... Two... Gotta sort of wobble on you. It's one of the big enemies that we can just sort of stay in place on, it seems. Get this, and what is inside here? That's... How much I see. Sad Tepet with Sore Roar. And what would they say if we actually went into story mode and talked to them? I will! She won't like it. Mm-hmm. Experimental sights. Okay. Got a switch, or right? Come on. And get in here. Bye. Bye. Nice. We got you. And if you. Okay, the missile got you, too. Fruit egg. Let's see what's in this chest. Looks like we found a key. Hmm, but what is it? Open. Key with frontal notches. That is. A key to a Saurian cart. Notch patterns that tend toward... Well, the main thing is, if you look for... If you try to locate enemies using the notebook, not on enemies, usually there'll be chests around those enemy groups too. Normal locus residents only transport Saurians in wooden carts and they can no longer move on their own power. Presumably we use this. And what's inside here? Rescue Doombasaur Aru Aru. Oh? Ah, oh, so now that allows us to use their sigil. Ah, so we have to sort of free them to get inside here. That's interesting conceptually. So I guess we could use that as a way to go back and talk to a few of them now too. And grapple up and... Let's see what they have to say. Trapped ones. Wooden box can't open. Yeah, let's go back and see. Well, the ones who are awake have to say. Hmm. Come on. The answer to that question is... If only these Saurians could move at any speed other than a crawl. Still don't have anything to say. Ones that are in cages. Trapping for a big rock furry person bad. A big rock furry person. Probably the sort of furry pauldrons on the Fatui. Hmm. But either way, Yumkasaur right there, but of course if we had Keen H, that would be a much simpler situation to begin with. Hello. Chop tap it with sore and well. Time for combat. Okay. Cool. Put that down and when are you gonna stop? I one, two, three. Fight! Thank you. One, two, three. Fight! Oh, we don't have a good way to vaporize that. Annoying. Well, it, we're doing good damage even through their shield. So never mind, honestly. Okay. So this is our Soaring Research Facility. Experimental site. Seems like it goes down even farther, though. Gotta find something more, then. Talk to you, and trap tap it with Sora, help me. Huh. 
Let's go back down. That was some interesting environmental puzzle solving. Extend that can really be called puzzle solving. It's just you free the Umkasaur and now you can have a sigil bear so you don't need a dendro character to take a Umkasaur in from a distance. It is interesting that there's no distance limit on indwelling a Saurian. That it can be inconvenient, but you can take them anywhere, really. Just use that double jump to break our fall, or not. In what way? What about you as grass Pokemon right now? Are you using Spore to put your enemies to Oh, 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 is it? Okay, that's what you mean. Well, I mean, they're Dandro, so yeah, grass type. Makes sense. So there's another one right there. We could swim in this Phlegiston if we had to, but it's not ideal at the moment. However, we'll over there, which will... I get the impression that I'm supposed to go here as part of a world quest that I'm skipping over, but... Sequence breaks are fun. Oh, and that... Flame granite. There we go. So what do we need to blow up? Gameplay tutorial. Replica relay balls. Balls made of metal that can be grabbed by the sons of Ganabe using grappling hooks, but Kinich is not out yet. Yumkasaur is using their own abilities. Since you obtain one, hold to aim and release to fire. If the ball flies onto a metal platform, the platform will activate. However, these balls will not vanish like real relay balls, so they can be removed from platforms that they are not locked to and reused. You know, you wonder why they do that, though. Okay. Now we can go deeper into here. Oh, okay, interesting, but... It's closed off. It's closed over the switch. And now... Seems to be... Facility proper, Extraction Research Center. It's a manual site, so it's the same layer, but... Hmm. All little things to pick up and toss at them. It's exciting. Suppose my question is, hanging post of Kwatepec Mountain. The final local legend would be Kwatwaku of Chimeric Bone. Now I'm wondering where she might be. Because I know that the one that is Ikwi Hapili's Aegis the Dendro Wild one. A bit far away. Hmm. Well, we can just lob these explosive barrels at them. That is more than fine. Hi! Boom, get boomed. So I. Oh, come on. How far away are you gonna stay? We can just lob these at you from a distance without you regaining your HP. Thanks. That actually killed, but. Go rather slowly. I don't think that's actually going to hit. That's not going to hit. Oh, well. That did not even break it. Mm. Got another barrel over there. Should kill even through that. So, going up and... You're not going right into the Fulgiston. Good for you, probably. And that did not hit either. Hmm. So where then... Could I get another barrel without going crazy? I want a you over there. Well, well, I guess you'll just go inside the liquid Phlegiston and die that way. That also works. Not going to complain about that outcome. But, I should go around and eliminate the remaining Fatui first. The machine. It's probably going to have some lore then. Oh, this is a bit similar to the machine we had to operate in. Fontaine, I think. Oh, there. Hi. Get hit. How many? We got a couple more barrels. That's exciting. Just barrel this and... Oh, okay. So the barrel damage does not appear to be limited at all by enemy resistances. Key with center notch is a key to a sword cart with notch patterns that are right smack in the key center. Though they call these sword and carts, what usually happens is that will pull the cart while someone sits on it. Okay. So. Go over this way then. That soaring cart is right there. So basically, they were guarding ways in and out. Well then. I wonder where this leads to. Hmm. 
Either way, allow me to open that up, I suppose. And that key with center notches, and so I guess that was just treasure. Okay. Huh. We don't have many other barrels, so I guess I need to find that guy normally. Oh well. There are some of those because I wasted some of the barrels we had. Are there any barrels around? It appears that... Oh, there's one. Okay. Thanks. And... Out of the way. Got another barrel, or... It appears the barrels are all gone. Actually, let me see. Can I... Oh, you take the ball and it's gone. Okay, the ball does not deal damage, which makes sense. Spawn that ball. Okay, come on. Dodge. One. Two. Hit, hit, there we go. One, two, three. Go for a simple bite, and now we need to find a way to eliminate your shield. Shouldn't be too complicated, but... Oh, come on. Thought I dodged that. Whatever. Go ahead. Now you're trapped, and now you're deactivated, so... Should be able to just bite. Just like that. Okay. Didn't even need to charge it up all the way. Another story in here. So everyone here has been eliminated. What is this? Oh well. I would imagine it's got to have something to do with caught you. What is that? Something like that in Fontaine 2. Underwater worms. Tepitless or warp well rural and gameplay tutorial. Removable grappling hooks. So we found one of those in the overworld, but presumably you're supposed to learn about them through whatever quest this is. Some grappling hook devices have been removed from the original bases. They can then be ins they can be installed in new fitted bases after which they can then be used. Okay. Oh, so basically he dug it up. Now I see. Okay. Well then. Stole that. Trap tap it with sore. Come on. Come on. And you say, whoa. Put this on here. Stall that grappling hook. Previously, it was just in there with an actual base. Diary of a soldier abroad. Seems to be the diary of a soldier stationed here. I'm puzzled to be honest, why do we have to go to such lengths to capture Sorin's or Nalan? Something something for gifts and special constitution, something something solid and liquid. Noma Kanav. Ah, he was the guy! He's one of the Tri-Stars! The Electra one seems more familiar with these things. I hear he had some kind of technical background before joining up with the Fatua. It's kind of like a, the two human local legends from, well, the sort of normal guys, Liam and Rocky Appleton had some more documents mentioning them in... Fontaine's third map set. I guess the question is, is that the second expansion or the third expansion? Do you count the first patch as an expansion or... Always tries to explain things to me, but it's all mumbo jumbo to me. My brain just ain't cut out for that kind of stuff. The firewater they sent us from Sesnai interests me more anyway. Our lord has never revealed what all this Phlegiston research is meant to be about. Is that... Okay, so that's got to be Capitano. That person from not one he brought with him has to be Ororon. Last couple of times seemed kind of suspicious, but we trust our words of judgment, not that we care much about this stuff anyway. First, a glass of fire water and then sleep. Note to self, don't get locked inside next time. I wish someone could have seen Vasily's face. That's the pyro gunner from the tri He looks so pleased with himself, he did. He's usually pretty likable. So by the buck when things need doing, boring. Worst there's no fire water during today. Damn that Vasily, he took my stash. Oops. So presumably... The cryo one is going to get mentioned in another one of the documents. Go over and check. Do want to see real quick. Also, access to Tepet with Sore abilities here now. What do you got to say? Trap Tepet with Sore, let me out. Well, don't have a way to do that yet. Come on. Let's climb up and. Grab that Pyroculus real quick before I forget. Yoisho! Kira says that a lot too. 
But maybe we need to dig under somehow or use another switch. That grappling hook is probably another way to open the door manually. We have a force open. So my question is, what's all around here, diary or otherwise? Can't open that yet. I wouldn't imagine. So this has got to be our way out. I bet it's going to start flooding or something. It makes some sense. There's the other Saurian cart, but... Realize that I didn't check inside. Okay. Spinel fruit. Not that's useful for much of anything. Wait, did I talk to that one already? I don't think I did. Let's see. More Yunkasaur. Presumably if one of them died, I suppose. So we're gonna need to put the balls in there to maybe deactivate the thing. Conscious Kapolasaur. Trapped up at Wasaur. I'm hungry. Well, they we can't feed it now. Presumably we'll feed it later. Scrabble a bit. It's so convenient. Might be a bit more limited than actual climbing, but it's damned fast. Okay. Got some instructions around here, presumably. Trapping Wasaur, person in black, black fur, hot, very hot. Oh, so... Yeah, then that's just got to be Capitano Oron, or some kind of permutation of the two. That is interesting, because... Even if Capitano is supposedly honorable, that doesn't stop him from being... Ends justify the means when it comes down to it, I suppose. Research Center Emergency Machine Operation Handbook. A manual that seems to have seen a lot of use, judging by the proliferation of handwritten notes scrolled upon its pages. So presumably they're extracting Fulgiston from the Saurians. According to the emergency brake system, the mining facility's brake system is a safety mechanism that must be manually activated and designed to shut down the core and prevent mechanical damage resulting from malfunctions of the Fulgiston research machinery. A potentially dangerous malfunction is detected. Please activate the control consoles on both sides to initiate braking measures. Must be the balls, then. Handwritten notes below are these things they shipped us really all that useful. Is modifying it to be powered... power it all? Modifying to power it all with lava from now on even feasible? All right, Vasily. No point flipping through this manual any longer. Just keep your eye on these machines humming and whirring away. Well, this section is written. Fine as requested by Vasily. I hereby declare the following. I promise not to accidentally lock myself in the cage again. Nor will I attempt to smash open the lock, thereby necessitating the activation of the braking system. On top of this, I solemnly swear that I'll thoroughly read through this manual. Cross my heart and hope to die. So presumably the braking system opens the cages. It's got to be good enough. Yeah, you better make good on that Sidoranko, so... Numokana, Vasui, and Sidoranko. Those are the three tri-stars. Seriously, I have to catch those crazy little critters. Put them all back in the cage one more time. Hmm. This is disable. Cannot be used now. Hmm. I... This is interesting. Though I would presume that using Kachina would be a better way to climb up this. Yeah, so what might be at top of anything? That's my question. Probably a Mora Rock or something. Maybe. If I can even get on top. Which, okay, I can. Okay, and there was just a precious chest up here. Kind of similar to what they did to... What they did with... Other climbable... Structures that were sort of pointless to climb in Conria. I mean, in... The little sort of pseudo Conria area in Sumeru, which would have been... Hange Afrasia? Madinat Onuas? That would kind of blend together. Basically, we've got to retrieve the balls and pull this open now. Okay. Pull that, then ends. Oh, presumably what we do is we have to pull this here to basically jam the door open. Prevent it from shutting. We can't pull it anymore now, so... And there we go. Environmental puzzle solving. Pull that thing. Nice. But what would the Tepet Wasaur even be used for here? That's my question. We indwell this. Don't see any kind of tremors on the ground. Huh. Well... 
much to think about, I suppose, so just go out through here. Toss one of the balls down the correct location, but that presumably also can need to get in through there somehow too. It looks like the base can be activated from here. And that one? I would imagine. Nice. Okay, and that opens the other one, the other part of the area too. But, someone's angry. Okay. Makes sense. Okay, and boom, boom, and one, two, three. Bye. Uh, easy enough. Okay. What I do want to check real quick is... What is going to be in that other soaring guard I opened up earlier? Because I didn't really check. So is there anything on top of that platform? That's another thing I want to check. And okay, there is a chest over there. It's good to be thorough about things. Okay. Well, the grapple again. The jump does not do enough for me. Actually, it can sometimes. Okay. And investigate these again. More trash artifacts. Go to Obsidian Set for Kinich then, presumably. Just gotta go through there now. Find out what's next. Really is a question, it's just. We have found a location of all but two of the local legends, and I know the general location of one. So that makes me wonder what actually is next, and please don't die. That was embarrassing. Okay. Guess I could have teleported back, but eh, not my style. That Saurian cart over there. What was inside it? So I didn't check inside, I just let the cohort, let the Yunkasaur out and. Well, I kind of figured there'd be nothing, but. Okay. We've no Saurian cart door unopened, as they say. Nobody says that. Aranara? Do you mean sort of a long world quest, or... As in literally an Aranara? Because... There are a couple of world quests. Yeah, yeah, there are... Two ones that are kind of long. And one that... Is also long that happens after those two. After you wait a bit. I did the first two ones, and it's... They show you some pretty cool areas. It's... Gives you a few interesting lore dumps about dragons and stuff. They're... The first two are not all that long if you stay goal-oriented. They take you in areas you can't access other ones. It can be easy to... Sidetrack in exploration. Oh, that one... That one's actually pretty short. There's not that much more... Past what you've already done there. And this, oh, this is over by the temple. Oh, interesting. Okay, now I see. We open that up. Hmm. Investigate key with rear notches, front, central rear notches. Key to a serene cart with notch patterns that tend towards its rear. Perhaps this might open the door of quite a special cart indeed. I guess we're freeing all the basic ones. What is that? Oh, it's a spear away. Okay. Hmm. There's a ball right over there. Hmm. Let's get inside this. There we are, Pyroculus. That jump helped with positioning more than I would have expected, honestly. Inspection and maintenance records. A maintenance log with an inspection report and evaluations for various machineries attached. Transportation, pipe heat resistance, no issues. Directional valve, no issues. Advanced fuel, brand new friction press, functioning perfectly. Test results, no issues at all. It's quite surprising that Fontaine Research Institute's equipment is in such good condition. I thought that they would just chuck us some random gear to try to pull a fast one on us. So to be totally honest, it would suggest to me... Given the Research Institute's cooperation with the Fatui, I think that suggests that Sandrone is, 
to some extent, puppeteering the Institute from behind the scenes, which would make sense, given that they are presumably Elaine. At least in part. Well, that means we're going to put some stuff into the Obsidian Codex we've got on Aoi. Okay. Decent enough Dendro damage bonus. When Kinich comes along, we'll just juice this up as much as we need then. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And, and, right there. How many things do we need to feed in? A lot. But, having free grapples is going to be real nice when I get to that. Okay. Doctor's handkerchief, we're going to use the ball to open that back up. I did not see that part either. <laughs> Well, let's see what else is in here before we get out all the way. And there are flame granites. I'm not sure what they open up. We haven't seen anything to fight here, even. Conscious Kaholsor. Presumably we can use them to fight dudes who will show up after this. No, I really don't know. Get that. And... Hmm. There's a chest somewhere. Of course, Moani could activate that spirit blade herself. Okay, now, so presumably what we do is we grab it from the other side, pull it out along the way, but before that I'd like to see where that spirit away takes me. If only Yumkasaurus moved a little more quickly, that would be quite nice. Now the flame granites do not seem to have much purpose here. Can we activate that spirit way, or... I wonder what I'm supposed to do to make it work. Maybe I shoot a flame granite into it? I don't know. And Pyro Crystal Fly. Maybe we need to find the key that opens that up. It wouldn't surprise me too much, but... I think it, it behooves me to try chucking a flame granite at it. At least once just to see what happens. The answer is... That is not how that works. Okay. There's supposed to be one more key somewhere. One more key that would let me... Open up... That Soarin' Cart, which would presumably have a Kaholosaur, because we found a Yunkasaurus, a Tepetwisaurus, so a is the logical you want to be the last one. Opens that back up, so obviously we just... Wait, what? Maybe I am stupid. I'm so cooked. Is that in there? No, it just spawned back where it was. Originally. Okay. Go on the other side, grab it, put in the final one, stop the extraction. Presumably free all the Saurians. I would imagine. Yep, and that's got enough of the time delay that we can make that work. Go in, shoot it out into... The final sconce, as precisely as we can. Okay. Thank you. And... Our dude's gonna show up and try to stop me now. Well, no way to see but to do it. This is a bit like... Some of those Fontaine machines near Merapi, the steam valves. Make sure the energy brake system finishes breaking. Hold out for 60 seconds and fend off the attacking Fatui. Okay, cool. Cool. So, what are they going to try to break? Well, whatever. See how many of you can take out before they stop us. One, two, three. Bye! One, two. Bye! Okay. Got more of you guys. More of your garbage. All we gotta do is stop you from doing your things. Fair enough. Thanks, two, three. Bye! And one, two, three, bye! And one, two, oh goodness. Cross, and I guess we'll use this. Come on. And, ooh, okay. Wait, 
I don't imagine there's much issue here. Just gotta see how many we can take out before all that happens. And righteous resistance. And my foot gets in still draining. Okay. And they're all coming out with health bars, so what does this mean? Oh, we gotta sort of fight our way out. Let me see. Oh, is this a local legend one or Wonders of the World? Anyway, at least the evil machine has been shut down. Okay. Yep, and this guy's a lot like Velashko. I don't imagine he is Velashko. Come on. Please. One, two, three. Bye. Or did we even hit? Not even sure we hit. Oh, come on. So go and. Well, it, it's tough. He's not as hard as... Oh, come on. Not mean to do that. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, the, the wild stuff is cool. Wild stuff is real fun. Let's get rid of all his... clones real quick. That's for fun. But the target priority is annoying here. We got one down, he's not gonna make more show up. This is just for fun. Come on. Don't have enough air weed to really hit clones all that well while he's on field. Oh, but. Oh, I guess they killed him. They killed him. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you for doing the job, Saurian buddies. And oh, he dropped his stuff here. Luckily, we can just... No, I think they knocked him to the lava. I wasn't looking. That's silly. Okay. Well, we got a luxurious chest. There's a wit. So they kept going out this way. What else is going to happen? Cure the rear notches. So that'll open that one up, and presumably we can use... that spirit way now. But before that, I want to see... How are they going to go out this way? Well, are they going out this way? Or... Which way did they head? It's too surprised by them just winning without me. Well, we'll see. But this... One of the wiki documents, this is a... Hidden exploration objective. This really meets the conditions. Okay. Tayo. So, if we open that up, I would imagine we use that spear way to get out of here. Well, the areas that quests will send you to will be decent ways to get more chests. Rawu, Rawu. Now you're there, which means presumably the spear way is open now? Yep, it's open now. Cool. So, oh, this takes me up there. I don't think that was available before. Maybe. Well, whatever. And we've... Yeah, that was not there before. I haven't leveled it at all. I never level them until I can level, level it as much as I can per patch. So until I can get it to 20, I'm just not going to touch it. I'm weird like that. I know. So where is this going to send me? Okay. Just an exquisite chest. Okay, cool. Hmm. But now there's a way in. Through there. Huh. I have 233 just collecting. That down through that part of the waterfall. Right. So we could try to go through that face in the rock. So I think that waterfall is split now in a way that it was not before. Okay. Because it's 30 per, right? Hmm. Well, okay. Okay. Is it... 
In Fontaine, it was 20 or 25, I think. In Samara, it was a lot required. That's what I know. So I think, yeah, we need to go the other way. Hmm. Let's see. That was interesting, but it doesn't seem like there was a quest they were just... Sun to find and get. Free all the Saurians. Well, that was cool. Don't dislike that. Let's see if there's anything else in here that stands out for me to try to take. Okay. But it was interesting how we ran into a weaker version of the Fatui agent local legend I'd found before. Okay. And if I hook my way out, let's see what I can find. Hop that gap. Hop that gap. Up here. Get those points back. And presumably they should all have escaped now. Let's just see how far we can get up here. Thank you. Is that jump? Thanks. If they're all out. And it does not appear like it really changed anything. That's fine. Other than just, well, them not being in the cages anymore. Let them all free. Cool. Can hop out. Found my way through here. I do wonder what's up with that other cave. Yeah, freedom freedom for the tepet with sores. Little Saurian babies. But it it's not letting me show the excavation site. Hmm. There are only two more Night Soul totems. I do know that one of them is in the area of Wheatsley Hill. So I have been told. Other than that, I don't know where the final one might be. Much to think about. Huh. Wheatsley Hill. Maybe around here? Because it said, you know, it's some sort of puzzle you solve, and... The totem shows up, and I do kind of feel like checking that out. While well, I have... Local Legends on the mind, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're over there, so presumably they wouldn't be too close one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Guess the question is, what would be sufficiently difficult and impressive is to make a local legend show up? What is sort of local legend access tier around here? But if it's Wheatsley, Wheatsley Hill. What is a puzzle of serious note around here? A couple of those dudes. Hmm. Some kind of puzzle. Maybe Yumkasaur related. I don't know. Hmm. It's copy bear related and oh I thought I saw a totem, it was just the rocks in Sochika not one. Again, I'm cooked. Huh. Is it here? Oh, by making you go off a cliff. Or... Not pleasant. Then how did she kill you? Ooh. Around here, not seemingly. Top of that tree, I guess not. What is over here? Maybe here? Oh, oh! Well, that that's unpleasant. Hmm. Maybe it's over here by these bones. Possibly. We climb to the top of that. This seems to be notable enough. Maybe. 
In other words, I'd like to see what this is first. Colonel. It's this massive area just full of bones. It's cool. I... Okay, no vibrations around here. That might be tepid with Sora stuff. And what is your deal? Chuno. Hi. If I had enough samples, would you look at that? Some strange... I could some strange guys mumbling over here. You can find people like me everywhere and not want to find any stranger it's you. If there's nothing else, please don't interrupt my research. Wait until the end of the game. My expenses this month instead did X minutes off to make up the shortfall by sending some of the association's research bounties. The well, Pamon didn't know he could get paid to do research. That's the sort of organization the Sword and Relics Association is, and more is having encouraged research about all manner of topics. Some I'm going to take on the deciphering the iridescent inscriptions that said this great work has never been completed, and the more to be had is most sizable indeed. It's just that, that what? Need enough inscription fragments to perform this task. Hmm, how about this? You can bring me your dozen inscription fragments, I'll pay you. How's that sound? I mean, look at seasoned adventurers. I'm sure you had such commissions all the time, don't you? Well, sure, we could help you. Haven't you run your haven't you run your monthly expenses in the ground already? Since we're over budget, it doesn't matter, matter how far over we are, but that'll stop be a problem. If I get those fragments to decipher them, I guarantee it. I'm gonna be finding those fragments, no guarantees that they'll be useful to you. Not to your worry, all you have to do is ensure that you find me genuine goods. I uh, do you mean that, just thinking about how some puncture still makes some fake items from the remnants of the secret source, while it makes my blood boil. Is there a small sum of more I forfeited in that transaction? That's how you burst your budget, and precisely why I need to make a comeback using these inscriptions. So please, I'm counting it and find this fragment. It's fine, and bring them to me. Would you kindly? I don't even need that many, just three, no four. I mean, I couldn't afford to pay for more. Found a couple, one from Fire Thieves Island and one from Toyok Springs Quest. So we found those iridescent inscription fragments, and we got three. Wait. Iridescent. Description fragments. That's from. Maybe I got one from another quest too. He's the slumbering, seeker no finding. Trial. Okay, so we got one from the shadow pin one too. So we need to submit all four. Okay, at once. Soon we will get one from Pledge and Forgetting too. I would imagine. Let's mark that spot for later. So it's over here. Hmm. You over in Wheatsley. This appears to be something. Oh well. Hi. One, two, Emily. Cool. Honestly, we can probably let her do this herself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh well. Not if the burning goes away, but the burning only one way temporarily. But, this isn't a bad way to do this. Oh, and there's a big old wall there. Gotta be monetary stuff. Okay, and... Come on. Come on. Keep on burning. This will be targeting character enemies with... In the radius. Come on. And... All she does is damage, but it's good damage. How do I blow this up? Zooming like this. And... Oh, huh. Oh, I bet we need to raise this. Maybe. That this would raise the wall eventually. All those monitor over there somewhere. Okay. Which means... Find some way to put Kachina down here. Hello. Shupats. Oh, come on. Well, that broke it open, which... Some things to find here. Get a single Pyroculus. The Monitu. That location is different. Hmm. So, there's a Monitu over there. It is interesting how the only seals were in the Night Kingdom. Some people suggest that Natlan is basically meant to be a sort of mini to that. Otherwise, that the reason there are no seals in general is because seals are. Or that the presence of seals only in the Night Kingdom suggests that the Night Kingdom is sort of a representation of the afterlife of Tabat in general. Because more or less everyone there is dead, quote unquote. Okay, so there was one just in there. That was simpler than I expected. 
Guess we can lead you over there real quick. Well, be fair, you're going back most of the way by yourself. So I guess we need to stay on them. Okay. Come on. Come on. It's one of them. Inside that graffiti. I wonder if and how it'll all just disappear at the end. On a Yunkasaur somewhere. It's a Tepet with Sword 1, so presumably the final Monitu is going to be on top. You gotta use basically all three abilities. Oh, exciting! Who do you think... Who do you want to get? Dia? Her C2 is good. In the sense that it just gives her 100% uptime. Oh, interesting. And which one? Knock you in the water. Not a bow or anything. Knocking you off the edges is going to be annoying. Well, all the Skyward set, which means Skyward Pride, Skyward Blade, Skyward Harp, Skyward Atlas, and Skyward Spine. And then there's one of each sort of unpaired version of every weapon, which is Primordial Jade Wing Spear, Aquila Favonia, Amos Bow, Wolf's Gravestone, and Lost Pair to the Sacred Winds. Aqual is decent then. Oh, dang. Well, that is rather unpleasant. Let's knock you all in. Can I... Yep, we can drop you. Cool. That Monitu's over there, so we need to find a way to grapple up top. Thank you. But Monitu... is sort of a... an American Indian term, kind of similar to Kami, maybe. And did you get something? Wait. What is that anvil-shaped rock? Is that anything? And to climb up... Oh, well. You could refine them. What weapon? Personally, I... I am fine enough with switching around weapons that I generally try to go for refinements instead of... Just doubling up weapons. In fact, especially if you're using it for buffs. Because it can be used pretty well as a way to buff other characters. You put it on someone like Sayu and use them to buff the rest of the party. Hmm. Let's Yunkasaurus it up. It would increase the buff value. Especially since, quite frankly... Since it's got really just pure attack, which is... Not especially amazing in a world where Bennett exists. You can use... Use it as a buffing method. So that one's just up there, makes sense. So up we use more or less one of every kind to make that work. One in water, one in a fissure, and one in... Stuff down here and... Okay, you went over there. My goodness. Okay. Although, to be fair, I bet it would actually be pretty good on Keen H. Because he likes having attack. Maybe. And will that raise that up? If it raises it up... Is there a... Totem in here, or... I don't know. This was interesting. I guess this was just stuff? Maybe. Huh. At least it's valuable. You can literally hear the... Kukasaur Tyrant right on the other, other side. I... It depends. On the other claymores you have. But... Quite frankly... It's not amazing enough of a weapon that I would say hoard them and have multiple. If you're willing and able to switch weapons around between characters. Especially since there just aren't that many claymores to begin with. Yeah, but at the same time, oftentimes Wolves is going to be outcompeted with Serpent by Serpent Spawn or Black Cliff or a number of other four-star options. 
just because it's so easy to get attack in this game if you have a level Bennett. If you don't, and you don't want to level Bennett, that's another thing. But I would say that it's not a crazy enough weapon that holding on to multiple is going to save your soul. That's my perspective. But you know, free country and all that. Well, we did not find the local legend, so I guess it's time for Between Pledge and Forgettings. Fair enough. Time for a massive lore dump. Right of the bowl, go to the Children of Echoes and search for clues concerning the volcanic token. Over by this Wyob. I... It's really only good for Albedo and probably Shilinen. If a character doesn't really get any use out of defense, you're not going to get that much out of it. We gotta find Storm Guy. Talk to Monku. Right of the bold. Higher seven meters. Recall Children of Echoes. Is there any room to negotiate? Monku, look at me. Didn't you hear what Tutu said? No one's attempted this. It. Maybe if you're using Mona as on field. But the main thing is, she doesn't really have a use for the HP. Hear what Tutu said? No one's attempted this feat in almost 500 years. Even if you claim that you found a possible entrance, well, so what? You listen well, no human or sworn companion sitting out on this road has ever returned, not a single one. Well, it... HP Mona in what sense? Hmm. Um, forgive my directness, but, well, there's a Relic Association guy, and that over there is that the chief of the tribe. If you're just building her for HP, I presume... It would make sense, but it's just sort of... I'm curious as to what your aim and intention in building her for HP is. Hey, Relic's guy. Oh. That's your traveler, Paimon Theodorix. Rawr. A uh, tepid with sort of the red tail scarf, mighty energetic, and looks different right after that, too. Right, little fella, give us another. Roar. Now that's your Theodorix, and I suppose that makes you two the ones it chose. Haven't you two been the talk of the late town lately, Traveler Paimon? Monkey here has been mumbling about you constantly. T2 mentioned you after his return. Wouldn't be a stretch, and T2 is that storyteller. Wouldn't be a stretch, call your recent deeds legendary, and you've been a friend to his children echoes thus far. It's no need to thank me too much. Not quite the phenomenal youngster. And it is in that capacity, Monku, that I'm telling you it is not a way to push a guest into a fiery pit. It's to prove a hypothesis. It's not how I treat my guests anyway. Said I, what's all this about anyway? Something about danger in a fiery pit. Apologies, allow me to explain. Remember what we spoke of before? To remove the mark of the flame, what's blessing? You need to bring the two required token types to the volcano. One of the tokens is in the ruins beyond the Children of Echo's land. There are conditions for getting in, though. It's on past custom. Which I only just found on a woven scroll, by the way, since it's been ages since anyone's hanger to try this. Wish to take your sword and companion to the volcano to perform a baptism that cleanses the flame with its blessing. It must be recognized by said sword's corresponding tribal chief. Which ones? Ones for permanent domains? There's no reason not to. Theodorx being a tepet with source, this means the chief of the children of echoes. Roar. Oh, we have to fight him. Isn't that you? Well, yeah, though, I'll be real. I don't know if this role applies to outsiders, still traveler. For hundreds of years, many are those who have tried to free their soul and companions from what runs in their bloodline. A thing that is more cursed than blessing. Not a single one has succeeded, which is why the tribes gradually abandoned the custom. A 0% success rate, seriously? Oh, well, that's not a bad idea. If you need someone to have VV. And so perilous is the journey. It's also said that the trial that must be passed before one may obtain the token. That's not only the warrior who steps forth, but also the Saurian with him. You are not of the tribes, and I'll not have you die in vain. So please, Traveler, I suggest that you leave Theodorx here with us. Nothing else I can sure will be taken care of until the day it must enter the Night Kingdom. In a minute! But if we do that, as I said, Theodorx will be unable to grow up. Roar. It's like that's not what it wants. We'll try this all the same, despite the immense peril, yes. What about you, little fella? Roar. Ah, oh, I'm yielding resolute yet passionate. Hearts blaze like fine phlogiston. 
Right then, thou shalt award you the right to embark on the volcanic pilgrimage. Roar. All right, let's go get that first token then. No, not yet. Now that you are qualified, you must undertake a trial of witnesses. Custom dictates that the warrior and Sorian must together obtain the feather of a green quetzal deep in the woods and offer up a stole of animal pounds. Can we even do that? Together, you must win 50 battles for a tribe and offer up 96 gems of high quality. I wouldn't be eligible to. Can you give me a discount on those from Mora? Come now, Monk, you forget it. Where are those traditions even from? Some lost stone age. The purpose of those formalities was to foster the bond between human and Sorian and own their skills and have had it with all that. Anyway, as I see it, neither Traveler nor Theodore seem to need that sort of proof. Then, the same Traveler, we have here not one of super simple way of dealing with such situations, fighting. Fight me and prove your strength. Right on. Roar. Wait, here, oh, do you mean we're going on stage? Of course not. Ah, the stage isn't a place for tunneling. Dual grounds are in the mountain to the rear. Come, let's head there. We'll have ourselves a good one. Just getting teleported there instantly. A call and a Saurian with a bell of Let's go get him Uchu. Okay. Right over here. Rawr. The call of the chief. 100. And to there and bite. Oh, wow. Roar. So you this haven't gotten this pumped in ages and we didn't even really get to see what he could do. Let me see. Let's still shoot him. Give me a second. And his combat, enemy, pock call enemy. A kick, a triple kick, a flying kick, and a head spin. So he doesn't even use the hammer, he just does breakdance in capoeira. That's fun. Out of the bold. He says... Puck call. Okay, okay. So if you lose, you gotta fight again. What do you say? Oh, no dog for doing the fight. Not recorded. Yeah, nice we won. Great job, us. Rawr. Uh, who? I'm not sure even the best warrior in our truck could take you out. That was a sound defeat indeed. What do you think, huh, buddy? Looks like we need more training. Mm. Quite a spectacular battle indeed. Pretty words, Monku, but is that all you've got? I'm gonna try your hand too. No, thank you very much. Well, boring. Oh, that was a great match. Theodorix. After one of the dragon mini bosses in Elden Ring. And that was a great match. Maybe I should name him Postigius Axe or something. I don't know. Traveler of the Real Deal. After the King of the Dragons and... Jelly? What about Jelly specifically? It's just warming up, you know? You weren't bad either. Ah, uh, save the commiseration. Now if I was younger, who knows how that might have gone. Uh, how I wish I could have taken you on then. Rar. Oh, uh, looks like you really are well taken care of, Theodorix. Of course, Theodorix is our trusty buddy, you know? Fair. As long as you like it. I'm very glad to hear that. As promised, this is proof of your accomplishment from a tribal chief. That is the... Talisman of Waxaklan Ubakan, which means presumably the other would be a, one of Shabalanke, a spirit's official name, or Monkey, there's your cue. The Talisman of Waxaklan Ubakan, another name for Quetzalcoatl, the Sage of the Stolen Flame. They can never memorize that name, but I do remember that after the Pirate Dragon Sovereign's death, after the first Pirate Archon was revived from the flames, Shuakoatl and Shabalanke. Sage and the Archon each brought back one token from the volcano, and whomsoever obtains both. They enter the cleansing fire within the volcano and purge all curses and calamities. So how long did the sage live anyway, Monku? I feel like there were tales of him from the tribal era to that of Uchkanat run, and even around the Shadow Pin. Well, he was the first human to use Phagistin, and who knows what fate came upon such a legendary figures. The sage is not human, though. Some say both his body and spirit turned into Phagistin, becoming one of not one's wings, lands, and flowers granting him the power to hear the prayers for help directed to him by all the tribes. Some say that each era boasts its own successor to the sage with title, passing it on even to this day. But, and excuse my bluntness, list, those are, these are mostly storyteller speculations. Ah, oh, watch yourself with those words and make Tutu mad again. All right, my duties are the hereby discharge, and wait, tradition does demand one more thing, which is to grant the babe journeying soul their companions my blessing. Mm hmm. So that's also a ritual you all do, huh? Yeah, it's a moral support. Don't get your hopes up, eh? Right then, Traveler Theodorix. Here I am, chief. Roar. May you soar through the mountains like the hardiest bird. May the wicked tides break upon you as if you were the hardiest of stones. May you fear no hardship, for the world is bound to be full of it. May you never forget each other, for fate must bring an inevitable farewell. 
May you reach your destination and gain what you desire most of all. I hope that you shall safely return. Cute. I will. Roar. The way does Paimon get any blessings? Ah, it's for you, little Paimon. May you eat and drink well, sleep sumptuously. See goodly growth. Sounds pretty good to me. You can even grow goodly or otherwise Paimon. Of course, just wait. Paimon's going to be as big as three mountains before you know it. That was in the T21. Talked about growing. Anyway, Paimon accepts this blessing, but only just okay. Fine by me. In that case, the right of witnesses is ended. But before you go, let me stress this again. Be careful. No, but I'll see you and see you to Uchu. Roar. Roar. Good luck. See you all soon. Legend of the Legendary Heroes. Now we have some proof. Now we go forth and tame the token off by the stage of the stolen flame. Entrance to the ruins. Ruins entrance isn't far. If I may be so bold, priests proceed to the ruins near the Children of Echoes. Go okay, hop on to help. It's over there. Oh, I haven't been able to go in there yet. I saw that when I was over in the veins. The legend of the legendary heroes. Prove the strength of your bond with your sworn companion. You're in the talisman of the Sage of Stolen Flame. Let me see. That's... The talisman of the Sage of Stolen Flame. It is said that the sage who once stole Fogiston from a dragon's claws. Left this behind is proof of a pact made with the tribes. Okay. I'll join you then. I wonder what team I should use here. Probably Kazu. Grouping is crucial for this. Hmm, Kazen, maybe Venti too? I don't know. Just like this. You. And you. Okay. Should be good. So, a point element will get cracking. Stay over on this side. Thanks, and... Cool, cool. Thanks, swirl. And... Just like that. Oh, goodness. There were some limits to the usefulness of such an approach. Hmm. Swirl. And... It more or less worked. Kinda. Maybe... Morgana? I don't know. Decent enough. The fastest way I always did this one was a Morgana team. But of course, that requires four characters all built around that. And maybe I could have tried Milani. That could have been fun. I don't know. Okay. Come on, come on. Swirl that. Thank you, or... Come on. And... Suck you all in there. Hopefully. And... Go... Stop. Hmm. And the launch in that guy should work well. Oh, but he couldn't get launched because he was in there. He was floating, which means he couldn't be launched. That's interesting. Well, whatever. However it goes. Whatever works. Got to make sure that all the characters get sucked up into one area, ideally. So the venti should be good for me then. Okay. Gotta love, gotta love crowd control. It's starting to get better. Okay. Just like that, if you will. Suck up the rest. Somebody add an element. Oh, okay, well. Okay. No, we tried. We tried. Come on, come on. And we'll screw you in again. This should be decently usable. 
Okay, well... Okay. If you're going for full damage, use Gale Blade instead of the charge attack. The charge attack just makes them drift gently down to earth. Okay. Come on. Come on. Get some calories in me. Alright. Dia first her element is good. Thank you. Put that down. Thank you. And yes, we'll scroll that again. Thanks. Decent enough. Come on, come on. So you get stuck. You get stuck. Okay. Cool. Decent enough. How many more runs do you want to do? How many more runs can you do? Okay. Sounds good to me. Time like the present. I would say apply the element with D as quickly as you can so that we can start swirling stuff. The swirls here are doubtlessly gonna be doing some pretty crazy damage here. Okay. And right over there. Cool. You said enough. Okay. So, I'm happy to help. Have you gotten any good pieces for Eugene? Mm -mm. Well. Oh well. At least you got more stuff to either turn into artifact juices or you still have other stuff up. Anything else you need help with? Otherwise, I'm going back to the quest. Well, fair enough. Glad I could help you out. No problem at all. Hmm. I wonder how close I am to achievement for doing a bunch of domains in co-op. Have I gotten that one already? Yeah, I have. 169, that's 13 squared. Oh, and they put this one out now, too. Achievement endpoint. The orbits of the true stars are traced in myriad of rings across the night sky. I see a blossom waits the return of a single flower. Anticipating the day when both hearts and petals should become soft and tender. Probably has to do with the flower and women's hair, the into that, maybe? Hmm. That could be an interesting one to try to get. It's just new bosses. Mm -hmm. Iron, iron, ice, and sweet. So it's just all the bosses that have come out since. Okay. Oh, Moby Dick reference. To be fair, it's real low hanging fruit. It's interesting that we don't have any fishing spots yet in Not one. Not sure whether we'll actually even have any ever. Hmm. Well, go to the ruins north of there. See what's even inside. I feel like we'll stumble on at least one more local legend along the way. I should hope. They do tend to be somewhat nearby. Story important areas. But. Gotta remember to try to get that one chest over there. Whatever's in that. 
also, all these crystals that I'm not sure I can break, or how I would break them. There's that one chest. Okay, and all the crystals always respawn, so there's not much of a point in breaking them anyway. But imagine, though, I sort of drop down inside those crystals to get in there. Maybe. I don't know. Come on. And one, two, three, five. There we are. I did not mean to do that. And Sierra do her. She has a fun pose that she only does if you use her missile while she's not in Night Souls Blessing Mode. Hmm. So to get down in there, imagine we want to climb up using Kachina, someone who gained down on the crystal and then just glide over? Yeah. That's how you do that. Okay. And that just makes them all go away, and now we can enter the fissure. Okay. Where is this going to send me? Do you need more help with something? Okay, so that's just a way to get out. Okay. If you do, don't be afraid to ask. Confused by what? If you have a question about anything at all, I would be more than happy to try to answer it for you. Okay, so it's those ruins over there. Okay, okay. I did not expect that to explode. Well, if that aggroes them against me, doesn't even make sense. Oh, so now there are rift mountains there. Oh, well, check real quick. Oh, okay. Hmm. I would say, just for long-term investment, I would go for, for the one with more crit rate. Generally, The ideal ratio is something like plus 21.4% is a ridiculous amount of crit rate. That is actually a god to your piece. The way you want, generally you would want something like a 50, a sort of 1 to 2 crit ratio, rate to damage ratio, so something like 50 crit rate, 100 crit damage, something like that. That's generally the ratio you want to stick to. But, of course, once you get closer to 100% crit rate, that kind of goes out the window. And also, if you're using a character with a Favonius weapon or any other effect triggered on crit, for example, if you were using Moaning with Favonius Codex to try to battery other characters, you would want to max out crit rate and nothing else because you wouldn't be focusing on her personal damage. Yes. And the way that has almost 50 crit value. Generally speaking, the way people measure... Stats like that is to multiply the crit rate by two and then add it to the crit damage, and that's what they call the crit value. And part of the reason why they do it like that is because, for example, well, generally speaking, crit damage stuff tends to be two times the value of equivalent crit rate stuff. So, for example, a crit rate circle at five star fully leveled is going to be 31.1 crit rate. Crit damage circle is going to be 62.2, exactly double. They're gonna go away. They're gonna go away. Um. Now we got Rift Ends. What's going on? Where are there monsters from the Abyss here? The music has continued. Oh, so we have to open that up to get inside. That did not glow originally. One, two. Oh my goodness. Of course we got Collision. I hit it here. And two, three. That didn't bite successfully? Whatever. Finally, those monsters from the Abyss have all been vanquished. All oh, the time has come. 
Place that token. I can place the proof that Pokal gave you on that platform. Oh. Oh. You would offer the talisman to begin an ancient trial. The next part of the story is tightly connected. To ensure you have the best experience, it's recommended that you experience the next part of the story. When you have ample time to complete it, let's do it. Let's do it. So the runes below are... Oh, the thing's in. The runes are the... What was it called again? The Sage of the Stolen Flames. So the entrance looks like something weird's blocking it. What are these trials? Zoom, we one sort of dendro, one sort of geo or pipe. Just as I thought. Oh, oh. Fair. Well. You can always save that piece and use it on someone who really needs crit rate, if so. But. In the long term, it's tough to build Mona for damage. She's good for support. But. Yeah. So I thought the stage of Shroud has already begun. Or do we need to break that barrier? Didn't think I'd have to use my wall phasing jutsu so soon. I'm afraid that barrier is difficult to break. With all due respect, we must use the correct method to open it. Ahem, according to the accounts of the ancient scrolls of our tribe, Sage of the Stone Flame seemed to be strong. We believe that humans could guide and lead Saurians, thus attaining a future far brighter, the age of the ancient giant dragons. Perhaps he felt guilty, for he stole the secrets of using Fulgistan from none other than dragon kind. This non guilt led to a hope that humans and Saurians could get along living in pieces of equals. Perhaps that is what drove him to leave behind the token here. According to the ancient scrolls, humans and Saurians both have their places. Er, that's about as clear as mud. Oh, so we have to have someone stand in one spot in the other. Oh, right. Sorry for my ineloquence. I believe it means that humans and dragons must each stand in their respective positions to receive the token. So that's the soaring to act in accordance with what a human wants is difficult indeed. This too is part of the trap's trials, the reason one is cultivating an understanding between human and soaring. Oh, though Palma doesn't totally get what you're saying when it comes to an invisible bond, we're la creme de la creme. Is that right, Theodorix? Rar. Rar. Rar XD. Question mark? Ah, oh, that's the spirit. Now please try opening the barrier, blocking the entrance. You have deepened your understanding with your tepidless Saurus companion during your journeys together. Human story in one heart and one mind. Mm. During this trial, I can switch to its perspective, allowing you to move forward together. Ah. I feel like part of Majora's Mask. That's what I think about. Special sensor setup, prepared by the legendary Sage of the Soul and Flame. Humans and Saurians must each stand the corresponding sensor zone to complete the trial. I would have thought the Saurians would be red and we would be green. Also, there's a sort of... No, they both have a sort of tech line design. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Both human and Saurians stand in the corresponding positions. We'll both be able to orp open the barrier to the ruins. Okay. Well. Stand here and switch. Yeah, right there. Here we go. Here we actually have to stand the green circle to arrive the platform from white floaty green circle. And what calls her white floaty too? Mm -mm. Well, you get these little abilities and he's a lot slower. Interesting. Rather low HP too. But can send out shockwaves. Okay. You're right there. Hey, you're so clever, Theodorix. Now it's open. Hmm. The works of the ancient scrolls were right. Well then, I wish you luck obtaining the token from the runes. I'll be here awaiting your triumphant return. Give my presumption, but I'm confident that you will emerge victorious from the final trial, safe and sound, having obtained the token. Spore the ruins. Sacred path trial ruins. Entered Saul in place of parting vows. Hmm. It looks like no one's been here for a long, long time. Rar. The dorks you gotta keep up. Yep. Hmm. Another teleport waypoint. Hopefully it happens again. It's always nice to get good pieces. Yep. Teleport waypoint down here. How many more are on the map? There's only one more teleport waypoint that we need to find, period. Okay. Unified civilization ruins. Explore the ruins. Mm -hmm. So... 
That notification's starting to bother me. Let's cash in our exploration reward. Thank you, world exploration. Our artifact juices, now we're at level 2. Which means this food, which is actually pretty much useless. Okay. So, teleport back here now. Go down into that layer of the ruins and see what happens. So there's the sea. Glittering gemstones, again, not that useful, actually, but that's fine. Hmm. So, go down here. Rawr, rawr. Hey, what's wrong, to for you? It's alright, just cling to travel or hold Palmon's hand, and you'll be fine. Yeah. This is Explore the Ruins. Again, unified civilization. Bit like Enconomy and Chasm, of course, and... What is this place? Big cave. Wow. Sure. What set are you trying to use? Scroll Hero Center City. Chosen or dragons open this door and enter the hallway. Like one of the message and here step into the audience hall. Audience hall. Reminds me of the audience pathway from Elden Ring. You fight the big snake. Oh, it looks like the real entrance to the ruins is over there, and just like the entrance to the first temple, there's a strange barrier. Rawr, rawr. Yeah, it's just like at the entrance. Try will stand below the yellow device on the left, or Theodore stands below the green device to the right. One of them seems to be floating. That's pretty high up this time, the root is different too. Oh, okay. Rue. Mori Theodore, so we'll only be separated for a little bit, but we'll still be in sight. Scare, just raise your claws towards us and roar as loud as you can. We'll be back, so don't be scared, okay? Roar, 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 roar. Don't talk like Theodorx, but if you actually manage to roar something, it's language and Theodorx misunderstands. Roar, roar. Well, don't you look happy all of a sudden? How much this doesn't get you? When are you happy and when are you scared? Roo. Sure seem to be against spirits. All right, then let's try opening that gate. Theodorx tried going over there. Once it's open, we'll meet in front of the door. Roar. Hmm. The thing with Kachina is that you can never really make her personal damage all that good. It's just not something she has the capacity for. But she is, at least right now, the best user of the Scroll of Hero Sinner City artifact set. Which is to say, the one that buffs elements in a reaction triggered by the holder. And since she's a Geo character, which is, cannot apply aura, can only trigger reactions, she actually can trigger it very effectively as long as you can apply aura of the element you want to boost first. It's a 40% 40 da 40 damage boost, which is truly ridiculous. Let me see. But, no reason not to level her, honestly. It won't kill me. Not causing that much more. I can always get more whistles. Hmm. Our Lakino candles, though, might be tough to come by. That's quite good. Especially since those defense pieces aren't going to be used on much anyone. But, if you go for Sheelanen, and you might want to, that would also be good on her. You know, not to say too much about how Sheelanen's kit works. Well, the Mahoyo ninjas are watching, but it would be pretty decent. Operate this. It looks like Theodore can also use this mechanism. Next character's 5-star. Only character from next patch. She gets mentioned at the end of the, Ar on the Archon quest is a blacksmith who forges ancient names and who will apparently forge an ancient name for us. That was the offer that Mavuika gives us at the end of the Archon quest, which is why we're presumably going to find her and talk to her to get one forged. 
She's also going to be a Geo character. And not to say too much, but she's going to be someone who also uses the new buffing artifact set to support and wants defense. Operate this. What's that going to do? Okay, that raises them up. For how long, though? So how are we going to get everyone on top there? That's fair. If you don't have a bunch of primos, it's important to make your make those hard choices. Okay. So where do we take him? Big thing is, both of us can climb, right? But doesn't mean all that much. Hmm. Well, go up here. We can operate this, but. Get them both to the same position at the same time. It's a different story. Only two positions here. It's... Well, it's subjective. It's basically, does it have a lot of rules in the stats you want and not a lot into ones you don't? Hmm. Supporting vows. Aw. Oh. Get over there. Well, of course, we can just climb around, given that we're... Well, both of them can climb around, but we can do it faster. It's inscription. I... It looks good. I suppose I would say... At least... A good piece is at least three stats you want on that character. Crit, rate and damage, and energy recharge are generally pretty safe for that. There aren't a lot of characters who don't need energy recharge, or who wouldn't like energy recharge. And maybe then one stat that's just kind of okay. And then ideally you get all your rolls into stats you want. Yeah. The crit boost it has is legitimately ridiculous. It's so like there's a mechanism buried here. Oh, so we have to use Theodore's to dig it up. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I... Could not just use Kachina. Yeah. <laughs> that does it, too. And that... Oh, interesting. That's a way to move over. Hmm. Dia has a fun kit, but she's not incredibly powerful, is the thing. Her damage, even if you build her for damage, it's tough. You'd want to use the emblem on her. I'm not sure if you are right now. The bear is open. Her pom near the seven mechanism would be a piece of cake for you guys. Especially since her energy requirements are tough, because, you know, she's a lot like. Razor and Zhao type characters in that. Their ways of getting particles turn off during their burst. Zhao's E's don't generate particles during burst, and neither do Razor's. Ah, uh, okay. Who do you like in that one? Raw. Hey, you did it, Theodorx. Great job. I'm just not sure why, but it feels like Theodorx is getting more and more reliable. Gives Palma a kind of happy feeling, too. Feels way more reliable than Palma. Roar. Hey, no way, and don't you dare agree with him. He needs Palm Praises you just a bit, and this is what she gets. Roar. Roo, roar, roo. Oh, you mean Palmon? Palmon's not angry and she's not crying. Roo, roar, roar. Hey, fine, fine. Palmon will roar, roar. Oh, is there one? Roar, I feel like I can understand him. Maybe you finally got a connection. How do you feel about the gameplay? It's what happens when we spend a lot of time together. Sometimes Palmon can tell what you're going to cook the moment you reach in your bag to fish up the ingredients. Um, yeah, mm, her, um, okay, it's probably Tibet fried egg. And whoa, Palmon was right. Under terrifying. How are the parries in QTEs? Palmon's got all more aspects that are really scary. You just haven't seen them before. Palmon's getting hungry just talking about it. Should hurry up and find the token. Once we find it, we can have a huge feast to celebrate. Okay, let's move out. Roar. Explore the ruins. 
Hmm. Hmm. Sup, how come you're staring that way? There's something strange over there. Probably that inscription. Okay. Then, swear upon this shibalanke. Oh, nice. The one who ascended realms above to protect all beings and bestowed seeds of flame to bring light to all beings. Your descendants return from the flames, none shall stop them. Oh. That ancient name related? I'd bet. What gets an aphid? Sad. Just picking these up for fun. Basically fireflies. Oh, goodness. How do I want to get up here? Okay, so she works pretty well. I'm just going over that way. That makes sense. Well, alright. Just grab a few of these for the sake of it. Did that damage me? I think the little bit of lava damaged me, actually. And I... I go under this. No, it's just solid. I don't know what damaged me, then. Whatever. Oh, and there is our final teleport waypoint, then. Yep. Hall of Parting Vows. I think. Yep, scaling the scorching sacred mountain. Got that. Unlock all teleport waypoints in the following years and now on Basin of Unnumbered Flames, Tecumacon Valley, Quathpec Mountain, and Tunyok Springs. Okay. So then, explore the ruins. And this is more lava. Okay. And something that looks like it's from Encon to be at that triangle in the center, and that's Shibalanke and Sage of the Stolen Flame. Ketzel Kowadal. Raw wah. It's the first time Palmans hear Theodorks make that sound. <clears throat> so he's got a point. This is a huge mural. What Palman? What? Two people each holding something around in their hands. Seeds of Fulgiston? Wait, what's with one of them having the weird head? Well, he's a dragon. Ra is a dragon, presumably. Uh, now that you mention it, it does kind of look like a dragon's head. Oh, Palmon gets it. It actually depicts a dragon and a person each holding a golden ring. Oh, Palmon feels like he just heard a story about two people taking something or other not long ago. Tell Paka and Monk who were discussing about the first pyroarch on the stage of the stolen flame. Rar. Like Paimon said, it did remind her of something she just heard. Besides, but if that was really the case, does that mean that of the Sage of the Stolen Flame and the first Power Archon, that one of them is a dragon? Which one of them first thing to roll on the Power Archon? Presumably because dragons and Celestia don't like each other. I'm not sure that presumption is true. I think the fact that we jumped the gun might suggest some inaccuracy. Oh, so that means that the Sage of the Stolen Flame is actually a dragon, right? Palmon recalls that you saw the same golden design on that floating island, Upper Sanctum. That sage was also behind us falling near that place when first came to Notlin and is also linked to dragons, chosen of dragons. Hmm, so that means that the message back then didn't mean chosen by the great Tethosaurus there, but by the sage, perhaps chosen by Theodorix. Roar. It's possible too? Hmm, strange. Chosen of dragons, come forward, come forward. As to the corridors, you left and right, the path will unfold before your eyes. Hmm. Her. What's the matter? Golden design says, do we have to go through from both sides? It looks like both entrances have their, each have their own barrage and mechanisms. Could it be that humans go one way and dragons the other? Whoa. Palmon can't even see this time. Theodorx, do you think it's too hard? If it is, we can still back out. If it's really too much, we can wait until you're ready and try again. Not like these runes are going anywhere. You need to push yourself so hard. If you want to stop, just say so. Ra, 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 ra. Your dorks, you're a brave fellow, aren't you? Still got as fast as you can. If things get dangerous, nothing is more important than your life. Not even treasure. Ra. I believe in you. Believe in yourself. Er. You don't say things you can't understand. Ra. Hmm. Oh, and a viewpoint. Fun. Oh, wow. That was a big area. Oh. Mural of Sworn Pledges.
Know that geography. Still need that chamber of night's trial. Swear so upon this, Shablanke, the one who ascended to realms above to protect all beings, who bestowed seeds of flames to bring light to all beings. When your descendants return from the flames, none shall stop them. Descendants. Hmm. All merciful. Said, I bet if I tried hard enough, I could just climb straight up there. Silly as it sounds. But I would frankly prefer to. Oh, it blocks you. It just blocks you. Never mind. Dorix is over there. Can we talk to you? Nope. Okay. Enter over there. There's only to wall off everything and sort of force us in. It's one of them. Let's bro in. Make us move slightly faster. Not that anything they do is going to be especially fast. Let's open. Thank you. Ooh. <clears throat> we cross through and then it'll close behind us, I presume. I would imagine we have to do this in sequence simultaneously. So do each part coordinated. Or iron barrier blocked a bad. No crime, a search other way. Hmm. Whoa. Oh, but we can't access the map like this. Not in this form. Oh, and that makes sense, of course. No elemental sight, because it's not us right now, it's the dragon. Oh. There's a Pyroculus there. Though maybe it might have to be when we come back. Presumably we can come back on our own power. Green, green there. Hmm. See how far we can pass. Just our own current abilities as the dragon. Here we are. Come into contact with the beams will cause the liquid fugacity level to rise temporarily. Huh. Could be good, could be bad. Maybe use that to swim up? Maybe. Hmm. However, the level rises as soon as you touch these mechanisms. Come on, also can toast there. Hmm. Well. Is that to go through? No, well, I would have preferred to hit that some other way. Hmm. If we use Milani here, it'd be child's play, but that's definitely not the way we're supposed to do it. Okay, so if we fly over. Or, okay. Trying to trap us, but we just glide to the rest of the way. Oh, cool. Laser puzzle. Fun. I... Let's let Kachina do this. Small as she is. If anyone's gonna get on her this ears, it would be her. Okay. And... Something up top. Well, I bet, honestly... Using Moani to surf up top is... Probably the way to get some chest. Maybe. Mm -hmm. So it appears that we can actually do either puzzle on our own without having to cooperate. Maybe. Cooperate. Oh, and that just raises that. That sends it back down. Hmm. Okay. Chest over there and move out of the way. So what is the sort of order for? These things. And it goes right into our inventory because otherwise it'd go in the lava. Anything through here? It does not seem to be the case. It's good to check though. Okay. The order of this. Who knows? Who knows how to know? 
Anything down there doesn't really look like it. Mm -hmm. Get through this way. Oh, come on. Can I... It's like a Chino do this. It's not blocking me. In theory. Fuse the... Oh, increase the liquid for getting all the light of all the elemental monuments. Okay. That's amusing. It's simple enough. Can't believe I didn't think of that. Well, it's, it's easy to forget that it's fire instead of just water that roots you. Okay. Cool. And there you go. Okay. Does that operate and... There is our way through. Anything else over there? Again, does not look like it. Stand where we need to stand, and what does that do when we operate that? Does that drain it, or...? Oh, presumably this is a way to go back to the first spot, maybe? Or have something to do with what Theodorix does. I don't know. Either way, the lasers are gone now. Okay. Stand here and switch back. Feels like it's finally coming to an end, so I wonder how Theodorix is doing right now. <clears throat> That's something the Traveler's supposed to say, or what? <laughs> cool cave. And of course, see on this side. Actually, not that big. Just kind of looks that way. <clears throat> okay. Soaking wet and drip drop, no good. Ah. Break that easily. Augustine Monument. Come on. Hit. Ooh, a chest. Nice. Much more in here. Probably need to climb up some of that. Oh, Tremulous Crystal True Resonance. So, Beetle. Three. Four. Five. And that. Oh, it makes it fall down so we can go across. Quick, big rock, sleep, Theodoric Strong. Okay. Makes the big rock fall down. Okay. There's no reason not to just stay in this state, presumably. It's our way across the water. And yeah, we can't use our elemental sight. Not like this. From Spore. It can't swim, but it can get wet. Probably want to knock that down. Can we lower that water level? Hmm. I wonder. Look for more crystals, maybe. Another beetle. Some beetles. Huh. Another chest. Pull that up. Okay. Blow up them all. And hmm. another crystal. Okay. Where are the rest? One. They're spawning in sequence, and the beetles help us stay underground. And there we go. Which one is going to fall down this time? Huh. And dominoes? Dominoes. Dominoes. That also should mean get our Hieroculus. We say still it doesn't consume Fulgiston. So it is basically just an alternate sprint. Fair enough. Collect that and I imagine it would <clears throat> you have to collect it to make things lower. It basically is the mechanism. And that to get up there or shows me that stuff but how am I supposed to go there that's the question just climb up I guess shouldn't be too bad hope you when I burrow through a tree like it's rock and stone we'll pretend this makes sense well, 
Hmm. Then you have to jump down onto these, or maybe. No, but what am I supposed to do here? Actually, though, can't jump up, but. Actually, well, mm -mm. can hop out, but I don't imagine that would have the range I need. Huh. Do I have to fall down onto it somehow, or? I really wonder what it's supposed to be. Lock the mechanism quest area reach. Do I have to burrow into this to make a move, or...? Aww. Also, it doesn't look like there's anything under here. Jump in and all this is not hacking it. Oh, I imagine... I have to... That's the time when I need to switch back and... Use the switch on traveler side. Okay. Mike like is all green. Let's smack that. Operate and. Yep! Now! Now it actually shows something on the other side because those platforms have shown up to be moved. Okay. Yep. Okay. That was the extent of the necessary cooperation. Go in? Well, it sends me while I'm underground. Oh, it just moves me itself. And then a final point to stand on. Cool. Roar, green, green. Go on here, and that should be all that. But am I? Do I have to switch back? Yeah. Switch back, unlock the mechanism. Guess it's sort of wet each other through on each side. I think. This. Yeah, because it was that one door, that switch unlocking one door. So that was where the back and forth was. Here we are, and oh, it's like envoys too. Yeah, there's another mural here, now what's it show? Purple dragon, a huge black dragon, prowling near along a tree and some strange person. Oh, and a different one. Dragon then. Is that Quetzalcoatl? Defeating. Or Shibalanke? I think that's Shibalanke defeating. Nibelung, or whatever dragon is there. Could maybe might be Shukuatl. Ra, ra, ra. Chosen of dragons come forward to reach out and touch me. Show your hand, behold the sin that will obliterate all. So presumably Nibelung and his absorption of abyssal power. What's wrong, Traveler? Why are you just staring at the mural? Shout towards the mural. Gonna get a vision? You witness with your own eyes the gargantuan winds from beyond the world. So that would have to be Nibelung with abyss power. Once glorious and grand figure now pitiable, having completely sunk into the terrifying shadow. The pitch black flame scorched the land and even the white tree nearly withered. The funnel envoy's glow shattered and smashed. Only able to subsist on the last leaves of the severed roots. Near destruction of Irvin Soul. The ancient battlefields brought only destruction. Over that time, Spectre stored evil working within the dark and filth flooded forth. Only the last leaves still shimmered in the night and after that time, only the last leaves in the night swayed with the ripples in the sea of memory. But then you see something else, but you quickly, quickly realize it is not you who sees it. You will understand someday. A voice that seems not to be what it appears whispers by your ear. As though it were laughing softly, but you know this isn't meant for you. You see the entire city's annihilation. The buildings collapse. The ashlight monoliths squeeze in midair as they are turned to powder. You see a giant dragon with pupils pierced. And a tiny human falling together from a great height. Shabalanke and... That might be the crazy king. 
While the world echoes with a sorrowful song, one composed the agony of a dragon kind. You see a man rising from the dead dragon's heart once more, his whole body seemingly wreathed in flame. So Shibuake could be a human manifestation of a dragon? Ooh. It's probably what that mural depicts. Hmm. What to see? Opep's dialogue. Oh, wait. Do fun on page. Heavenly principles. Where is that? Has to be a mention of dragon odd with the heavenly principles, I think. Heaven's glow, super from beyond the heavens, power from defeat the heavenly principles. To precious serper. Dragon. Which one? Part of Oasis, Fire Seed, Dragon, Destroy. Don't, different from the ancient dragons who came to terms with you. Hmm, that's all they say about the idea of the dragons, sovereigns included, fun with to that. I mean, associated with Celestia, but that does not mean. Some of the dragons have gone close to their kind, some died, leaving only bones, others fled. Hmm. Interesting. Ooh. What? Ooh. Coming over to me, or? Travel, are you okay? You weren't moving a muscle. What I saw might be kind of hard to explain. Really, Paimon didn't see anything at all. We're both looking at the same picture, you're just way more perceptive than Paimon. Roar. Oh, that's Theodore's voice. Sounds like it's coming from over there. Oh, Paimon sure hopes nothing bad happened. Hurry up, we need to go look. Meet up with Theodorix. Okay. Shoes are just over there. Where's this all gonna take me? That warrior right here looks like we'll be able to meet up again soon. Roar. It's just water there. And now, just that room. Hmm. Up onto here, we can meet back up. And then, where next? Going up top, and then... Oh, those windows are ways out. Okay. Cutscene! Okay. Path of light. Don't fall. Oh. Mmm. Sort of paralleling the meeting of human and dragon. And wait. Big laser beam into lowering the Fulgissum. Another path into some kind of vortex. Alright. Hmm. Is that gonna take us? A path through the lava has appeared. Looks like the trial is almost over. A guy from the Soren Relics Association, the chubby chap from the Children of Echoes, kept talking about how dangerous it was, but it looks like there really was nothing to it. In that case, lead the way, Paimon. We can't even see the bottom, but we're good friends, so of course we'll go together. Cute. Ooh. Your dorks look, huh? We're nearly done. Roar. Did you see some strange things too? Roar. Don't be afraid. Paimon and I are here. Yeah, though Paimon isn't sure what's happened, Traveler's right, no matter what you got us. Roar, roar, roar. Ooh, looks like he's finally perking up. Okay, looks like he can continue downward. This place does feel kind of dangerous. Chosen of dragons, proceed only the enemy from the realm beyond. Then you will be granted entry into the final paradise. Hmm. Err. Seems like there's danger below after all. The golden designs tell you that too. Roar. Okay, then let's rest a bit, Traveler. We'll keep going once you're ready. Note a perilous battle lies at the end of the golden staircase. Since this battle is quite perilous, be sure to complete your battle preparations before continuing. Oh, baby. Traverse the lava. So parting vows. And of course we can't use that to get back. No, we can't. Huh. 
All right, let's go into the lava this time. Just hope it doesn't all come pouring down and we're halfway through. Wine. Right, all right, Pommel is only kidding. And besides, even if it does, Pommel will swoop down and scoop the two of you out. That. Oh, that's just down. Staircase area where we had a raise of focus. And there you could just drop down there, jump down from that triangular platform, too. Oh, it actually, it's an area. It doesn't teleport you actually go down through. Well, that's crazy crazy. Yep. What is this, the kiln of the first flame? Invisible wall though, so we can't fall off. Now we're getting teleported. And this is Catastrophe's Edge. It's breaking. Oh. Oh. Sort of the origin point of the Abyss Dragoner. Oh, Puma never imagined there'd be something like this under the lava. We're really deep underground now, aren't we? That sage with the totally impossible name walks the claw on Uvacan, gets Quaddle, hit the token here, and no. In this place, I made a pledge with Shibalanke. Now let go and let the future of humans and stories be as it may, only the enemy cloaked in shadow shall not be forgiven. Shows under dragons, proves yourself by facing the mighty foe that you may ascend the sacred mountain from this place. Roar. And that doesn't show up as dialogue. Well, what's going on? That sudden chill. Something's coming out. And... The, the opponents... Oh, wow, there's so many rift hounds here. Seriously. Oh, there's some strange ones, too. Roar, roar. Look like sort of mid-size, honestly. No, they aren't. Wait, it is. These are the ruins with Theodorix, and... Is this where we are? Huh. Helping's nice and all, but make sure you take care of yourself, too. Only fizz damage. Whatever. And... And that's down. Cool. And... Kalani. Right. Thanks. And we got you over here. Come on. Healing would be decent, I would say. Okay, and guess we'll put that back down and fight. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Well, that should do it. Nope. Nope. See those skulls? It's Wolf Ward time. Abyss corroded golden Wolf Ward. Something's wrong. Big eye incoming. Boundary eroding beasts from beyond. That's one massive golden wolf for it. Be careful. Okay. You. Interesting stuff. How oh, you're crazy being. How about knowledge? Void barrier. Power of the abyss descends upon the world, displaying a rejection of all that is. Targets protected by void barriers can't be damaged while defended by it. Only by attacking with elemental attacks a certain number of times can it be destroyed. Additional night soul aligned elemental attacks can be able to destroy void barriers with greater ease. <laughs> Put that down then. Thank you, and. Destroy your barrier, maybe. Or not. Once you actually do stamp there. Well, alright. We tried. When is that barrier coming? Oh my. Ooh, corrosion on that. That rush attack is. brand new? Okay. Come on. Hit. When are we gonna get our not so stuff in here? Two, three, right. Oh, and wait, something about it looks super weird. It's time. It's time. Doesn't seem like it can be hit. Elements versus Abyss. And. Big explosion. Big crash down. More explosions. It comes out. Some kind of worm. Come on. Let me break your Void Barrier. Just get down somewhere where I can actually hit you. Like Zorbo is floating things around it. Oh, baby. Roar, roar. Oh, so you're gonna stop that, aren't you? Or your body is burning off. That's the power of the blessing. Now I see. It stopped. Okay, this is... should be child's for now. Right. And we did it. 
Thank you, dragon. Roar. See those runic lines, too. Oh, it looks like Theodorus just got stronger. Did something awaken, maybe? Like the power of the flame ward or something. Definitely looks stronger. Oh, are you alright? Roar. It's totally rocking during that fight. That's a really big help. Yes, most impressive. Oh, it looks like that's not a, that's not a power Theodorus can just use whenever. Sort of an anti-abyss power? The monk who did say that's better not to use power like that too much anyway. Rawr. So, so where did that weirdo with a hard remember name hide the token? All Pawn wants to do right now is grab Theodorx and get the heck out of here. Touch the inscription. This does say we're in Tecmacon, and it goes over here, but that does not mean investigate the ruins with Theodorix. And Invisible Wall does not mean that's where we are on the map, I guess. Mm. What? Oh, okay. Chosen dragons come forth. Continue onward. The Paradise. Unto the final sanctuary of my people. This, this is where the token's really kept. It's so quiet here. Worship and receive you who would protect all beings. Oh. Worship and receive you who would bring light to all beings. Come forth, chosen of dragons, come forth. For the inscribed hour has arrived, the inscribed hour has come. Pretty clouds. I would imagine that the fourth chosen of dragons present the amulet. In return, you shall be permitted to set foot on the sacred mountain. You can already... Presumably the volcano is going to be accessible no matter what. Can't imagine they would prevent you from actually going in the area, period. Oh? Another inscription? Whoa, it looks like the stone tablet lit up. Rawr. Touch the stone tablet. As the golden lines light up, shining brilliantly, a fragmented scene surfaces in your mind. The eyes of the great dragon split in two by the sword of the children of man. The seal split asunder engraved upon the white disc is mistakenly classified as a whole. Disc seal. Whole. Maybe the talismans, or? What is it sealing? One was given to the Silver Dragon's White Claws, one to the Resurrected Corpse. Silver Dragon. Silver. Urban Soul Dragon? Resurrected Corpse. Maybe then... Ubakan and... Shibuake is the Resurrected Corpse? It's buried beneath the Great Monument and will swallowed in the belly of the Headstrong One. Belly. Monument. A white disc appears beneath your feet, the other obscured in shadow. Great wings shadowing it are raised, and you finally see its drawn upright pupils. And here a voice says, Glory, glory, the eternal empire, Ushka Natlan. You see the person standing before the empty throne, picking up that disc, turning around, looking at you. Presumably the mad king. Cup traveler, please wake up. How you finally responded when he touched that stone tablet. Just froze up and wouldn't react to anything. Another one, but look over there. A round plate with golden carvings. Golden etchings on it appear on the ground, and that should be the token we're looking for. It's rawr. Golden seal engraved on a white disc. And what are you saying? It's nothing. I'm just a bit distracted. Probably are tired after all. We sure did do a lot. Did a lot today. Let's rest up after we get back. White disc. This should be the monument in the belly of the headstrong one. This is the corpse of the dragon. This token kind of looks like a big round plate, and so in the mural, both the human and the dragon each had discs like this. Anyway, we got a token. Let's take it back and show it to Monku. Rawr. Hmm. Between Pledge and Forgettance, quest completed. Gold of the Sun, together with his blood. Golden Entreaty. 
A white disc retrieved from the ruins of the Sage of the Stolen Flame. It is one of the essential tokens required to journey to the Great Volcano of Tolan and remove the Flame Wart's blessing from the little tepid source back. Golden inscriptions are etched into the surface of the white disc, and when touched, one can sense the intricate patterns pulsating as if imbued with life. Mm -mm. This is Quetzalcoatl room, is that? Mm -hmm. Well. Oh, another cornerstone of stars and flames. As we finish it. Some nice chess. Yes, the question. Oh, and an inscription fragment, so we can complete that now. This is in Tecumacon somewhere. Probably go back by going on that bridge. Cup. Now we're just in here normally. Offering to nothingness and shattered night jade. Oh, so we just got that. Just needed the two pieces. A nearly weightless black jade enveloped in chilling flames, according to Not One's Legends, offering it a specific altar might just open the path to the king ruled by the night. I know what we gotta do now and where we gotta do it. What'd we get this time? Oh, we got your Saurian Companion. I guess they couldn't make that a name field thing. Well, presumably they have it for Wanderer, but offering to nothingness, collect all the Shattered Night Jade and combine it into the sacrificial Night Jade offering. A Red Sea, part and clear a path. Moses. Complete the trials of the Sage of Stolen Flame together with your sworn companion and open a path to the bottom of the lava. So we've gotten that already. Right. That bridge, but I can see that. Gold the sun together with his blood. Turn the token needed for the pilgrimage to the volcano and the ruins of the Sage of the Stolen Flame. Hmm. So in that case... Did all the major quests here. Yep. I don't know how far out we can go. Oh, I might get back if I jumped in there. Well, let's basically land. Mm -mm. Yep. But is there a way out of here other than just teleportation? That's my question. Shattered Night Jade. There were... Oh, I didn't even realize that. There was one in the Fulgistan Extraction Research Center. And I didn't even notice that. <laughs> okay. The luxurious chest in the Fulgistan Extraction Research Center. That must have been on top, and I just didn't realize that. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. be a little challenge we can do. Go to the Chamber of Night's Trial now. Oh, but... Okay, that's not climbable. Interesting. Is it walkable? Either way. There's gotta be a way to get back here, I would imagine. Except... Invisible ceiling. All right, so I, that is probably the way to teleport out, presumably. Let's see how we can leave this place then. It's interesting that there's no viewpoint here. What that means in context? But Let's keep heading back in this direction. Will it stop us? Will it teleport us? Or... It, it, this appears to basically be teleport only, so to speak. Hmm. Not sure how I feel about that. Try going back, maybe. Show Monku the token you got. You should still be waiting for us over at the entrance to the ruins. Talk to Monku. See what happens if I just go down here again. 
Go down the stairs, Kachina. And the answer to my question is... What? Sends you to Catastrophe's Ed, and that repeats every time. And then you can go in here and it takes you to... The Paradise, because otherwise those chests would be missable, and we don't want that. Hmm. You're over there. Go find you. Hello. What do you have to say to me? What do you have to say to me? Answer to that is... What? Yep. Hello, Monku. Got our... thing. Monku, we're back. Roar. Phew, that sure was one long wait, not gonna lie. The longer I waited, the more anxious I became. Is my idea in the first place true, but if we went to the ruins only never return, I'd be beside myself with guilt. Though if you'll excuse my bluntness, I must ask sure you found the token that the Sage of the Stolen Flame left within the ruins. Pretty tough, tough as a piece of cake. I knew you'd do it. Roar. Look, it turned out to be this disc thing in the jig. Golden Entreaty. Looks like it kind of has a mustache. It's surely not a Golden Entreaty. Golden Entreaties actually exist. Incredible, I must include this in my research. So this thing's called the Golden Entreaty, huh? That's right, apologies, I'm just so excited. It's said that this was once handled by the Sage of the Stolen Flame himself. For a moment there, I was thinking about what it might be like to keep it for myself as some kind of family heirloom. No way we needed to save Theodoric's roar. I know, but it's recluse about the token's whereabouts while I'm all out. I haven't the slightest idea where the other one might be, Uchkanatlan. I forgive my asking travel, but I just hear you say Uchkanatlan. It's one that you saw it when you touched the stone tablet. Well, who'd have thought it'd be an Uchkanatlan? The ruins of an ancient city that rise across a narrow stretch of water, north of the Flower Feather Clan. That's where it is, and I am truly sorry, but I cannot help you. Not only does my tribe forbid me to go there, but so does the Solar Relics Association. Hmm... Apparently, it is said that many years ago, some association members received a commission to investigate that place, but after setting out, they vanished without a trace. So then, the association is too well clear of anything to do with it, not one. Sweat it, you've already told us plenty. Roar. Well, I must thank the two of you once again. I can't tell you how much seeing your golden treaty means to me. Any of which, I better hurry back and get this all recorded. Thank you once more, Traveler and Pinemon. I wish you a safe journey. Theodore, I was your success removing the mark of the Flame Lord's blessing. Farewell. And yeah, that was us. Yes, at the journey's end, the place where all souls come to rest. We'll meet again, I am sure of it. Oh, ah. The only thing that comes to mind, then, would be... Using that night jade over there. Well, Gusson Research Facility and the excavation site actually have nothing to do with anything. Actually, very strange. But. There is a fight waiting for me. Not precisely a local legend, but something of similar use, I would say. Yeah, this started also, I should run. Couple domains. Got a little bit of fragile resin I could use for that. And over around this way was another place where we can put down a night jade to make another obelisk. But it's not the same kind. Right there. Take us to sort of abyss version. Well. Wow. Touch, Night Jade, activate the chamber next trial. And there we- oh, it's just a portal. Touch that. And... Chamber of Night's Trial. Basically the stadium. Blocks us off. So does that. So does that. We're kinda hedged in. So basically the arena. Hi. Viewpoint, Trial Grounds of Restive Night Souls. Nice. What we got here? Through the blaze of battle alone can these unquiet night souls be stilled to slumber. 
This is the Basin of Flames, as opposed to the other Night Kingdom area, which was... Though, to be fair... I don't think it's a coincidence that the giant pillar looks a bit like the big pillar in the middle of the Night Kingdom area we were able to get to previously. But what that means, nobody knows. Okay. So we can't open these yet. Gotta talk to our cat and the Night Soul Spirit. It's not open. Assuming we can only get up so high anyway. It's basically reused with a bit of obsidian in there instead, but... Soul Spirit, what ho? To think you could find this entrance long has it been since any have come hither. So there was one in... The Ancestral Temple, one in... The other ruins, and one just... In... The Fulgiston Research Facility, which... Honestly, also suggests some Capitano connection to Nalan, given that it was his facility, the Black Fur. This, yes, this is where the Night Souls roam, though with few among that none now live on the sun kissed earth who recall their names or deeds. On Night Souls, while a mistress slumbers. Oh, it's probably Renova. The one mentioned. Someone who helped Shibalanka make rules by moving up probably the shade of death. We are dreams when our goddess awakens ever and anon. So the night god is actually a night goddess. Night god night goddess's kingdom. There are but single strains of her mind. That a living person should set foot here, huh? Those overcome by their battle craving can hold back no longer. A wider warrior who are much beloved. Still these unquiet souls to slumber soundly with the boys of battle and triumph and be rewarded. What say you? To do this. How bold, how bold. Well then you must triumph. Oh well. Hi there. Was that off? This, this looks kind of like water, but it isn't. Let's all try wars within 60 seconds. Okay, fine by me. We can do this. One, two, three, and fight! This actually might be tougher than I would have liked. I don't know. Hmm. I think we can manage this somewhat, but. It's its own question. To beat a bunch of these guys. Come on. And just like that. And Emily. I think we can manage this. Maybe. Wave momentum. Fight. And one, two, three. Fight. One, two, three. Fight. Oh, goodness. And one more should do it. One more missile. And here we are. Or not. Or can we? Can we? Uh, oh, come on. Oh, uh, never never mind. I, wow. I try again if you're willing, brave warrior from afar. We don't have any Fulgiston in here. Mm -mm. We were close. Very close. I'm gonna burst up this time, might help. Let's try that again. Change your mind, happy. Will you do battle the Night Souls present? Let's do this. Bold how bold, and let's try him. Okay. Come on. Make this work. And 360 no scope. Get in here. One, two, and... Wait, did... Not all of you got it? Whatever. One, two, three. Right. One, two, three. Right. One, two, three. Right, and we're doing okay for ourselves. Thanks. Put that back down. And one, two, put that down again. One, two, right, one, two. Okay, well. Thanks. Two, three, right, and one, two, three. And we did it! Nice. Well then, please take these as a reward for completing the challenge. So we did it. And multiple luxurious chests. Huh. By battle be settled, complete the combat challenge of the Chamber of Night's Trial. Okay. Didn't get anything special. 
just regular item rewards. Okay. Including two of these, but. That. Ten, ten. Five. Slightly less than 60, I guess. That's wrong. So if I revisited this place, it is interesting that it seems like to leave you just have to teleport out, that there is no other exit. But if I came back and went in again, would it give me any new or special information? That's my question. But let me repeat it even if I don't get more rewards. It was a fun enough trial. It wasn't especially suited to Milani, but that's part of the fun of it, really. Hmm. In Huitzlan Hill. Huitzlvi Hill. Not Huitzlan. Huitzlan are they? The Andro tribe. Let's see what happens if we go in here again. And. The Night Soul Spirit Kitty is just gone. Okay. Oh, we did our stuff. And the funny Night Soul pseudo non water. Mm -mm. Wheatsley Hill. I wonder if that's something to do with gathering up the little dragons then. I want to know, I want to see. I'm gonna get to that one more local legend. And then I could do that together with Abyss tomorrow and just find the remaining local legends that I need to find? Maybe. Pitsley hmm. Hill. That well, one's up there. Oh well. Actually, no. It's not how that works. We... There are two. There's one that's over by Huitzley Hill, and another whose location I have no knowledge of. It's interesting. I might want to just go around until I find something. Yeah. Only God knows at this point, and of course that Saurian got clapped while well, I was gone, so now I need to go back and find stuff. I guess so. Certainly frame it that way. Let's collect that crap. Okay. And it was just some basic things. Okay. Huh. I wonder if there might be one over here? Maybe. Some of them seem to be in just caves that are tough to just find your way into. That is where World Boss is. We fought a few times. Mm -mm. What is down here? Nothing I can really see at the moment. Just well, there are some rocks. Interesting. Still the stadium, though. Hmm. Well, that's probably not much, but I feel like checking. Come on. If we absorb, or we can just activate that. Put this down here. Okay. And... Huh? What? Is that not working somehow? It's actually really strange. And now that worked and it's okay. Avatar. Fluid Avatar of Lava. Normally you don't see the fluid ones in the overworld. 
seems. Come on. Two, three, four. Right. One, two, three. Right. Okay. Simple enough. It's a chest. Okay. Hmm. Over around here, though. That's the question. So I think I'm just gonna run a couple of domains real quick. I have a little bit of resin to use. That'll be all for today, then, probably. Managed to get in the funny chamber, so that's good enough. Hmm. Should be around where Flower Feather Clint is going to be. What are. Nonce? Need some treatment or we can get something patched up? Oh, I bet she's Nightwind. Maybe? Or. Not that I wouldn't be able to, but I'm almost out of medicine right now. For a doctor. That's right. Something wrong with that. Most of the masters of the Nightwind you'll bump into on the road will be doctors rushing somewhere for a house call. Unfortunately, I just finished an emergency visit, so I'm quite exhausted and running low on medicine, too. How about this? If you really do need help, you can try your luck and see if you can find a young man wearing a hood out there in the wild. Might sound a tad eccentric when he gets talking, but he's a good person. I'm sure he'll help you. Got it. That's probably Aoife. I, speaking of which, can't use all the mushrooms you gave me before, so I've still got some left. Take these, please. They're quality. That's the kettle cat mushrooms. Don't worry, I'm fine. Oh well, that's alright then. Hmm. Also, that guy over there is gonna collect our inscriptions. Give those to him real quick. Yeah, but not finding those local legends came as a surprise to me. So there was a puzzle somewhere in Huitzli. Chuno? Yes, I have. Three from various quests and one from just an island. Okay, haha, good, good. I'll crack the code on the inscriptions, golden pattern soon enough, and then the reward shall be mine. Now that I have a choice, if I fail again, I'll be out of fun, so it's sink or swim for me. Right, here's your payment, by the by. Will this really work? Cool. That's you, thanks for bringing me those inscription fragments. Still, the progress I'm making deciphering them is worrisome. They're similar to focus engravings are merely ostensible. The complexity therein is far greater than I ha had imagined, but there's no going back now, so I've got to get this done either way. Ha ha. Hmm. Like that. Will this really work? Give the collected iridescent inscription fragments to the researcher Chuno. Hmm. It's hard imagining where around here. Maybe up top. Maybe I'll check that real quick. See if I can get to the top. There's something up there of note. I really am scraping the absolute bottom of the barrel. Okay. Mm. So there's just the Dendro Wild, which should be somewhere around here, and then... There's one that's just... One of the Yunkasaurus warriors. Yeah. I don't know. I'll climb up here at least and see what's there. Thank you. Okay. Go up. Up top. And the answer to my question is... Probably nothing. Got a graffiti arrow. As one does. I'm up top and... My reward is... One of those Mora rocks, I think, and a sconce for a Yunkasaur. It gives you a nice view of Signs of the Canopy. Hmm. Or like Signs of the Quiffle. Ceaseless Clash. Ornament. Okay. I really just wonder where the rest would be. Before that, we can condense some resin real quick and use it on things. Okay. So fragile, and I think it's far more stuff for Kiniche's talent books. 
Other people will need this too, so. Right. Four quick runs of that domain, it will be chillin'. Oh, ends. Wait. Weeklies. Bosses. Little deposits. Cooking and forging. That said, I just... I don't need to be all that good about maxing out the limit because they've introduced missions for theater and for making artifacts to make up for the fact that the bounty stuff is gone now. There are more rewards for that are not weak base than ones that are now. Or at least the equation is somewhat shifted. So myriad illusions, sublime turning, and return. So just like this. As far as I can get the remaining achievements on the ones I. Uh, the local edges I've found, but I don't want to just look up where the remaining ones are. It's a lot less fun than that. Alright. Thank you. You're not burning up. Thank you. And one, two, three. Right. One, two, three. Right. One, two, three. Right. One, two, three. Okay. And should be fine with. Emily's last couple of hits, and that the AoE she does is quite nice. Would be all about ensuring that ideally I burst down. Don't burst them down, but hit them together so that the small AoE that is there can be maximally used. However, that's gonna work. One. Oh my goodness. Two. Three. Right, one, zero, three. Right, I. Oh my goodness. Don't kill me, please. Right, and. Let's go for it. And. She has that hands on hips pose. If you run out of your night soul points, which happens normally as long as you're not in a place with foot kissed in to consume. In a place you wouldn't re really wouldn't see, it would probably be not an overworld. And that's all the tofu we've eaten. So a couple more runs, and we'll be Gucci. Safa Boba Kasoka. I would imagine that I should be in a pretty good shape to just take Kini 999 when I get him. To be fair, he doesn't even use his normals, so. Be even easier to use, I don't know, 699 or even 199. That's sad, uh, that's stupid. I don't want that. Come on! Ooh, big crit. Okay. Oh, that's already gone. Wow. Really, it's just a matter of getting lucky on those crits. Okay. Try this one more time. Oh yeah, crazy fast. Well, it you get more crit damage when your night soul points go up or down. The entire point is just, this is a good spot to use characters with Night Soul. It's, you know, 70 or so percent crit chance, so there's a good chance that damage gets boosted at pretty crazy proportions. Even better if you get a usable Witsith bonus, which doesn't always happen, but happens somewhat often. Nicely enough. Okay. So... See how many of those condense into, and it's all for today. I think tomorrow oh, there's abyss, bosses, card stuff, and there are a number of scattered world quests in the area that I could just do. Said so also, yeah, yeah. I think now we might be able to go back to the rest area from the start. I think there's a quest I need to do to do that first. But the little area you get forcibly teleported to becomes a rest area for the baby Tepetlosaurus. And go back there eventually. It's interesting. And I'll just craft them up real quick. And that'll be all. Yeah, yeah.
It's going to be interesting to go in there, especially since you can get little decorations from the area when you do certain quests. Like it's Pokemon Gold and Silver or something. Okay. Then we can make nine of those. Yeah, we're close. We need four more of those for Kinuj's 999. But two more local legends, and God knows where they are. I bet one of them is probably on one of these islands, maybe? I don't know. Much to think about. But it does feel to me as if Toyok is kind of scanty. Trips the local legends in there. Well, but in the original Gold and Silver, and I think especially Crystal, I think there were actually more. And there's a pretty big amount. Hisio, Balashko. Tristar is another one presumably around here. Oh, Otto's Blessing, he never does. Perry Guy. Sappho. There are a lot just around this area specifically. It's interesting. Think about where I've seen them before. Four just all around here. One, two, presumably three, four, five. I feel like over in one of these spots, around here somewhere, would be a logical place to find one more. Oh, the underground. That's a fun one. I have some nostalgia for the underground. A good deal. Either way, I think that should be it. So, Santa Ragan, and I'll be seeing you later. Adios.